pitching. Love his style. Great balance, tough inside runner, can really do an awful lot. I expect him to be the focal point of their offense tonight. He's really special. The Miami Redhawks, of course, will be opposite him trying to defend Span. Now, they were just a one-win team a year ago. Mike Haywood comes in, second-year head coach, yeah. turns things around. Best turnaround in all the sport. You know, you can make the case that he has done the best coaching job in all of college football. And I say that because of the two big obstacles he had to overcome. Think about changing the losing culture. When he took over the program, they were 2-10, and 10, went 1-11 and 11 his first year. Yet he managed to turn them into a winning program in his second year, and he did it despite losing a veteran quarterback and turning his offense over to a redshirt freshman who's only going to make his third start tonight. And if that isn't great coaching with those two obstacles, I don't know what is. And he's got strong pedigree play for Lou Holtz, coached under Sabin and Mac Brown. He's heard some good pregame talks. Now it's his turn. When adversity hits, you never, never give up. It is your opportunity to get up off that canvas and fight. You have to fight back. As I sit here and hold your hands, as one heartbeat, I feel the energy coming from everybody in this room. We have to go out here and fight. We have to fight as one heartbeat for 60 minutes. It's one play at a time. Oh, he's ready. One heartbeat, 60 minutes. Can they pull the upset? For Northern Illinois, Jerry Kill, his third year with the Huskies 127 wins over a 16 year head coaching career old school hard work and run the ball kind of coach he's had a lot of success so his name starts showing up on the short list for coaching vacancies reportedly in the mix for the opening at Indiana well, isn't that good to hear I mean he's worked hard and long and established a great reputation it's nice to hear his name popping up with some of those Big Ten jobs and other places Miami won the toss deferred Northern Illinois will receive Seth Phillip to kick Kreider and Davis back deep for the Huskies Tommy Davis trying to get a handle on that ball and then tiptoes up the sideline it's taken down by Pat Hinkle forced out there so we say hello to Chandler Harnish he was the starter last season but then was slow to recover from a knee injury 17 touchdown passes on the year can also run the ball averages 69 rushing yards a game talking about a knee injury that led a lot of people to believe his career was over yet he made it back out of the gun and flanked by Chad Spann and here is Spann and a good game out to the 28, tackled by D.J. Brown. Let's look at the impact players brought to you by Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah, this is a really good offense. We talked about Span at the beginning. This guy, over 1,200 yards rushing, runs that read zone. Good low show, shoulder pad level. Gets a lot of help up front. Scott Wettage at the center spot, all Mac first team. Really strong up front. Gets a lot of help from Logan Pegram, who's also outstanding. Helped that team to a 280-yard per game rushing average. Big offensive line paving the way for Spann's gain of eight there. And his second carry of the night goes for a first down. Test this defense from Miami of Ohio. It's going to be tested up front. They've got some good players up front. A lot of Brown guys, other related. Austin Brown is the captain. It's really strong inside. Linebackers are also going to be challenging. I really like Evan Harris. Big play guy, five picks on the season, a couple of TDs already. And in the backfield, the corners will be tested with these wide receivers. And Gafford, Jordan Gafford, is the glue that holds that secondary together. Harnish's first pass of the night, and that is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Willie Clark. The coverage came from D.J. Brown. The test, this offense is truly outstanding. 39 points a game, first in the MAC. They lead in just about every statistical category out of the MAC. Expected to be here and heavily favored in this ballgame. Yeah, they're rolling nine straight wins after a one and two start. It's their longest win streak since they've been an FBS program. And the fly sweep here, Landon Cox. 
actually that was Akeem Daniels, the freshman receiver on that carry. And he was immediately bottled up by Gerald Wedge. Well, this offense will give you the read zone, some quarterback design runs, some of the quarterback draw, and then they love the play action. And Harnish is very good at it. They get that running game going, he will take his shots down the field. Very accurate. He's a good quarterback when he moves, when he throws on the run. He's really excellent with that. And third and ten, Ricky Kreider now in the backfield with Harnish. Pressure up the middle. They pick it up, and it goes incomplete as he was looking for Martel Moore. But a good play by D.J. Brown to get in against it. Brown did a nice job laying off, read the quarterback's eyes, drove on it perfectly. Brown to the outside, and he manages to get in there. Now, there was some pressure as Harnish was there as Mark was coming in, but really good play on the corner by Brown. Josh Wilbur on to punt for Northern Illinois. DeMarco Payne back deep for the Red Hawks. Payne calls for the fair catch inside the 20. Well, Zach Dysert had been the starting quarterback for Miami, but he suffered a lacerated spleen against Bowling Green three weeks ago. So here is the third start in the career of the redshirt freshman, Austin Boucher. And you know what the kids called him growing up. The water boy. Bobby Boucher. Bobby Boucher. Yeah, you knew that. <laughs> Adam Sandler character from the water boy movie. Thomas Merriweather. And look at Merriweather getting into the open. Merriweather inside the 40, down to the 31 yard line. Remember, this is the senior running back who had a 96 yard touchdown run against Temple. Well, Tessie doesn't have the great top end speed, but he has great vision. He's a great misdirection runner. See the pause and the step back? He feels the hole, the softness to the right side. That play is designed to go back over the over the B gap. He manages to take it one step further to the outside when he saw the opening and got out there. 47 yard run from Merriweather. And now nothing doing with Boucher this time. As Alex Kuba, the fine defensive play. Well, let's take a look at that Miami offense, and they've got some really good skilled players. Mayor, whether you saw him play that opening run, Harwell is a good guy in space. Robinson is the big receiver. They love to get down the field, and they use him in the red zone. They will be in a two-back set from time to time, but primarily one-back set. Up front, very strong, especially since they got a couple of guys back. Brooks and Kennedy had injuries, but they're back. In the last three weeks, the running attack has been really, really good. Boucher with time and able to get it to Robinson. He's going to be a couple yards short of the first down as Butler was quick to get to him after making that catch. Well, take a look at the Northern Illinois defense, and it's a very good one. Kaufman up front is a special player. They're very good up front. Kraus also solid inside. This team is expecting to play well tonight. Their linebackers are active. They don't rotate a lot of guys in there. They expect to get a lot of run action. And then in the secondary, really, really strong. Smith on one corner, George on the other. Third and two. They pick up the pressure, and they get it complete. And stumbling to the 10-yard line was Nick Harwell. Good, quick decision by Boucher. Well, Harwell is the guy that works well in space. If he gets a little opening, he can take it all the way. Doesn't need a lot of room. And Boucher puts his ball right on the money, allows Harwell to run after the catch. Pretty good start getting your young quarterback comfortable opening drive. Harwell has four touchdowns in his last four games. And now a first and goal for the Red Hawks. Merriweather, he is wrapped up right away by Sean Kroger. And Devon Butler also getting in there defensively for Northern Illinois. 
Well, we talked about Robinson, the wide receiver number 11, who's the big guy, big target, explosive player. He is the guy that can make things happen in the red zone for Miami of Ohio. And if you're Northern Illinois, you have to think about rotating your coverage towards him because he's such a threat down here. Empty backfield, five receivers set on second and goal. Goes for the slant and able to secure it was Andy Cruz. Six foot four sophomore, a big target down in this portion of the field. And Miami has struggled in the red zone, and part of that is they, they struggled on offense up until they got their running attack going the last couple of weeks. And you're playing a redshirt freshman quarterback, inexperienced down here, not a lot of reps, tough to push that ball in the end zone. But he's got to find a way, if they're going to win this ball game tonight, they need touchdowns, not field goals. So that 39 and a half percent number. So Boucher to be tested here with a third and goal. And that's going to be short of the goal line as DeMarco Payne tried to dive and reach out. But it'll make for a fourth and goal inside the one. You know something? This goes against my very nature. But I'd go for it here. Hey, you're an upset yep. Yep. playing in a yep. title game that yep. you didn't even expect yep. to be in. That's exactly right. No one expected you to be here. You're a heavy underdog. You've got a great opening drive going. If you miss it, you got him backed up. Heck, I'd go for it here. Normally, I want the points, but not if I'm an underdog on the road like this right now. Fourth and goal. Merriweather. Touchdown, Miami. As good of a start as they could have asked for. Well, they got everything they wanted. They scripted it perfectly. They got the running attack going. They got the redshirt freshman quarterback comfortable. He made a couple of good throws. They get down here with a big play, and they convert it for a touchdown instead of settling for a field goal. And now Trevor Cook for the extra point. And that is blocked. So the lingering effects from Arizona State <laughs> have showed up here to the Friday night oh, prime time game as well. Is that going to happen all weekend? It started Thursday night. It continues tonight. Maybe Aaron championship Rippo. weekend has a lot of kicks. Mike Krause, big Mike Krause, got up for Northern Illinois. But it all started with Merriweather. Thomas Merriweather, 47-yard run that set up the fourth down touchdown. back here to Detroit the Marathon Mac Championship game where Miami the Red Hawks up 6 zip early on we have three BCS bull bursts on the line tomorrow on the ESPN family and networks first on ESPN at 745 the Dr. Pepper ACC championship game the Knowles and the Hokies then on ESPN 2 at 8 Eastern UConn trying to win the Big East and on ABC at 8 Eastern, Oklahoma and Nebraska in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Dr. Pepper Championship weekend tomorrow night on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC with Oklahoma and Nebraska. This is our second weekend in a row of playoffs, considering what we had last week. It is win for a BCS game, or you're out. Tommy Davis. Helmet comes off as Davis is taken down at the 26 by Eric Finkel. You know, Tess, think about championship weekend and think about the kind of streaks teams have heading into this weekend. Auburn with the longest current win streak at 13 after Boise State lost their win streak last weekend. And last weekend was an incredible weekend. This one sets up to be another one. Big games, a lot of pressure. How do you perform? You know, I think if you told people three weeks into the season that Virginia Tech would be number four on that list, Wow, yeah. They'd shake their head. Yeah. So Chandler Harnish and that Huskies offense back out on the field. And here is Chaz Spann, who was ridden down by Ryan Kennedy. Just on that Virginia Tech point, what if they hadn't lost to James Madison? 
They'd be considered the one, -loss team. one of the top one-loss teams out there. Undoubtedly yep. would be up there with yep. Stanford and Wisconsin. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Span again, and not much running room. Jason Sims was quick to get to him. Well, the thing that's noteworthy about that is the way that Harnish carries out the thing. Harnish will run that ball. He is not afraid to take off on that re that zone read option there. Even though he had that knee injury last year, he plays fearlessly. I expect to see him pull the ball down an awful lot. It was interesting when we spoke with Chad Spann yesterday. You asked him, hey, what's your favorite running play? And he said that. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he likes the threat away. that his quarterback is. Exactly. Third and six now for Harnish. He's going to air it out. And coming up with it is Moore. Montel Moore, touchdown. about it more just simply ran by Brown and Brown's laying off in coverage winds up singled up with him and more just ran by him Michael Tomofsky missed a couple of extra points on a cold blustery day last week uh, for his first attempt of the day And he puts it through. So the big strike from Harnish to Martell Moore. Probably the most complete receiver this team has, and he showed his stuff there. Smarter this holiday season at Office Depot. And Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. The Marathon MAC Championship, Northern Illinois 7-6 on top, thanks to Martel Moore's 69-yard touchdown catch. It's the longest pass play of the season for the Huskies. Chandler Harnish has been operating this offense. Great style, especially down the stretch of this season. They're 11th in the nation in scoring. They were putting up big points in recent weeks. So Marco Payne and Danny Green back deep for Miami. Michael Klamowski to kick for the Huskies. And there's Green. Now to the 23. Hey, Tess, let's go back to the touchdown. Here's Martell Moore working against Brown, and Brown has that deep outside quarter coverage. So no one's supposed to get behind him. At some point, that becomes man coverage. Zone becomes man. Now watch the adjustment to the ball that you get from Moore. He fades back to the outside where that ball was thrown, to the outside where Brown was supposed to be, making a great adjustment to the ball. Fantastic play. Very nicely done, that adjustment by Moore. So Austin Boucher, quarterback for Miami after such a good opening drive. He takes a strike downfield now, and he's able to connect with Armand Robinson. Wow. You know something? They're not protecting the young quarterback. Not at all. Well, listen, they went for it on fourth and goal. They've got an attitude that we got to go for broke as the underdogs tonight. Well, they get him to the edge, and they let him fire it. I mean, this is opening it up, taking chances, letting this redshirt freshman get comfortable. 21-yard reception. They admitted to us they were limiting the playbook in recent weeks. Now here's Thomas Merriweather, and he gets free again. Merriweather down to the 31-yard line, finally taken down by Davis and Smith. Good start to the night for Thomas Merriweather. So Tommy Davis 
slow the field there. Take a look at the way they do this. They bring this around, and then they get a double team here and a kick out there, and that works perfectly for Meriwether. Double team down, kick it out, pull your guard around, and Meriwether gets him behind it and sees it to the outside. Good vision. Came in tonight with over 400 yards in his last three games, did Meriwether. Back to the ground they go, and straight up the middle for another good game for the senior from Missouri. Well, Meriwether has been a hot running back lately. A couple of weeks in a row. Had that big one, went for 96 oh. yards against Temple. Yeah, he's a Mac Offensive Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago. 5'10", 213 pounds. Now he'll get a breather here, and Tracy Woods will come in for Miami. Woods now, and he has the first down for the Red Hawks. This is a nice drive responding after Harnish came up with a big strike to Moore. Well, things have worked perfectly for them offensively. Boucher has been comfortable with quarterback. He's made good throws, and this offensive line that was beat up and struggling midway through the year, healthier now, playing with confidence. Three, four weeks in a row now, they've had great ground attacks, and we're seeing it tonight again. Getting that experience, getting that confidence. Now a fresh set of downs for Boucher. And here goes Woods in a stiff arm inside the 10-yard line. Their blocking on the perimeter is outstanding. Their tight end, Bruton, 82. Watch 82. Get a good block there. Open up that hole. And then you get Robinson, 11, coming down with the crackback block, opening up that outside perimeter for Woods. Jerry Kill, the Northern Illinois coach, looks on. Had a lot of respect all week long, talking about the job that Mike Haywood and Miami has done this year. Woods again, and into the end zone just like that. A lot of offense early here at Ford Field. How about the vision and the quick cut? Penetration into the backfield, but Woods recognizes it right away. Watch him see this penetration and the adjustment to the outside. And he had Jake Kaufman, 54, in his face, and he just cut to the outside and found a lot of green. And Trevor Cook has first PAT of the night blocked. And this one goes through. Northern Illinois unbeaten in back play this year, but Miami has a strong start in this title game. Net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. You can log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JimmyV to donate. The numbers are just staggering when you look into it, Rod. More than 1.6 million Americans diagnosed with cancer every single year. Unbelievable. And a, a great Jimmy V week. And you just, I mean, how often do you not think about that speech? I watched it just the other yeah. night before I took in a D.C. Indiana basketball yeah. game. Incredible. And, Get the same reaction every time you see it. You want to help the cause. Yep. Davis and Kreider back. This is Tommy Davis. And catches that seam and then somersaults out to the 30. Of course, Coach Jerry Kill knows something about battling cancer. He lost part of a kidney to cancer when he was the coach at Southern Illinois. That was during the 05 season. A tumor removed. About a month after their last game, January 06, he was recruiting three days later, and the good news is uh, in remission. He's a wonderful guy to talk to about perspective of life. And, and uh, Jimmy V fan, as a cancer survivor, really indebted to him. That ball looked like it was tipped up at the line of scrimmage. I think Will Diaz got his big paw up there. Well, this is what... Jerry Kill has done in his career. Started out early on at Saginaw Valley State in the Michigan area. 
A lot of success at Southern Illinois and continuing that here at Northern Illinois and has overcome, as we mentioned, his own bout with cancer. Says, I don't pay attention to my name being out there on job offers and all the potential coaching changes, but you go 8 0 in the MAC and you play the way his team plays, your name's going to be out there. Downfield again and connecting as Nathan Palmer was on the receiving end of another good toss from Harnish. 24 yard gain to Palmer. Tess, we talked about all the weapons they have. Running back, wide receiver, you saw more earlier. Here's Palmer, he's really the deep threat. And the coverage gets run off and you see he's wide open there on that corner route. So just like that, the Huskies cross midfield. Now they go back to Span. Chad Span. Good move. Penetrating into the defensive backfield and down to the 35 yard line. All right. See how shifty Span is? Yeah, yeah. We talked about his inside running, his change of direction. But I want to know when did the Mac become the whack? Yeah, the Mac has gone whack here yeah. in this first quarter, hasn't it? Nonstop back and forth offense. But able to jump right on it was Harnish. He put it into the pocket of Chad Spann and then tried to pull it out. Yeah, he wanted to take it and run. That's that zone read, and he was going to take the option of going with the football, and it just got dropped. Had it in there too long, lost it. You know, he kept it in the gut of Spann for so long, I think Spann made the assumption it's my ball. Well, he's trying to ride that as long as possible and see what the defensive end will do. If he crashes down, he wants to keep the ball and go outside. Harnish now dumps it off, gets it to his tight end, Shepler. And Shepler is driven back by Jarrell Wedge. Well, Northern Illinois has had a tremendous season, ranked in the top 25, first in the MAC West. Second championship game, a nine-game winning streak. Haven't lost since that Illinois game back in September. 280 yards a game, rushing, an accurate quarterback, loads of talented receivers. They are a legitimate top 25 team. First undefeated Mac regular season in school history for Northern Illinois. Third and three now. Harnish the pass. Lofts it up. More. Touchdown. Martell Moore's second touchdown of the night already. Well, he's working on Brown again. He's Brown earlier for a touchdown. And gets hooked up with him once again. And another perfectly thrown ball. Harness gives his receiver a chance to make a play. And another great adjustment by Moore to the ball as it's thrown over his shoulder. He came up a little bit lame, limping at the end of that. 27-yard touchdown reception. And Tomofsky puts Northern Illinois back up a point. That missed extra point by Miami. The only difference on the scoreboard. Two touchdown hookups now between Harnish and Moore. Let's go back to the touchdown pass. Martell again working on Brown. Watch the shaky back pedal. Poor technique by Brown. He doesn't really gain any depth, kind of shuffles and hops, and he loses it right there as Martell Moore is at full speed and just runs by him when Brown has deep coverage there. So there's going to have to be adjustment. They're going to have to get better technique-wise out there, or they're going to have to give more help to Brown, roll him up, and bring a safety over the top because Moore is owning Brown right now. I wonder if Miami can keep up with a pace like this. Lomofsky's kick sails into the end zone. You know, I see a lot of corners poor technique at times. They do not backpedal. They actually shuffle and they don't realize how much ground a receiver breaks down their cushion when they don't do the proper technique for the first three or four steps. That's all more we intended to there as they tape up that left leg. 
And there is that defense. You see DJ Brown. He's the guy that got matched up with more twice. Yep, but you know what? Good corners forget. I mean, he got lucky. He didn't beat you. He got lucky. You got to come right back out and play. Boucher. He's able to connect with Harwell, and Harwell gets it out to the 27, taken down by Chris Smith. You know, every corner has been there where you've had a bad start, a rough patch in the game, and you have to shake it off, get back in there, and still play with a lot of confidence. And if you can't play with confidence, you can't be on the field because everybody else knows, and they smell, and they go after you. So you've got to come back out and be aggressive and play, play tough. That will be the challenge for that man, D.J. Brown. Here is Boucher, and Boucher with a good surge ahead for a first down. He was cut down by Chris Smith. I'm impressed with the way Boucher has played this opening quarter. A lot of composure, played with confidence, has thrown the ball well. Only the third start of his career, and it's for a conference championship. Yeah, look at the rushing yards tonight by them. Already over their season average. And Thomas Merriweather had that 47-yarder to start the night. Also had the one-yard touchdown run on fourth down, but Northern Illinois answered with two touchdown catches by Martell Moore. A very entertaining first quarter. 14-13 Huskies. More to come for the Marathon Mac Championship game when we return. ESPN 2010 Marathon Mac Football Championship, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Weekend. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. Miami has won more Mac games than any other program, but tonight would be a big upset here in the title game against the 25th ranked Huskies. Coach Jerry Kills had such success this year. Boucher. And that was batted down. Well, you know, Tess, they've done a great job running the football tonight. Talking about a team with this accurate drive recap. They've done it on the ground. A team that was 12th in the conference in rushing did that last drive on the ground. Merriweather tearing off a big game. Woods setting up this touchdown run on his own, getting into the end zone. Their second rushing touchdown of the evening. For a drive recap. A laid handoff here on second down. As Merriweather was trying to fight for a little more, but DJ Perkle was all over him. Yeah, you know, Tess, take a look at Merriweather, a little banged up there. Coming into this ball game, Miami of Ohio threw short an awful lot. A lot of three-step stuff. They didn't really throw the ball down the field. Well, they changed that approach in the first half of this ball game. They've let their young quarterback throw it down the field. And so far, it hasn't hurt them. Now they've got a third and long. This could be a tough situation for him with a lot of coverage deep. Tracy Woods comes in to flank him, replacing Merriweather. Boucher has time, and he was able to get it to Armand Robinson. And that should be good for the first down. He went down low to that turf. Northern Illinois was singling incomplete, but Robinson was able to scoop under it. Nice throw. When you throw it over the middle, keep that ball down. Well, that's a great effort. Receiver. Yep. Hands look underneath it. Yeah, that's a catch. That's a catch. That ball does not come out until he's trying to get up. Robinson among the all-time leaders in receiving yardage and receptions at Miami. So he gets the 11-yarder on third and 10. So a fresh set of downs for the Red Hawks. Tracy Woods. Loss of two. Adult Jefferson able to spot Woods in the backfield there. Well, the defensive line starting to step up a little bit. Just look at the penetration up front. The big bodies really making effort. As you see Lawson, 92 in there. Baxter, 90. 99, 99 Jefferson. Wood stays in as the lone back. Play action. 
possession. Sold it well. Gets it to the fullback. And a minimal gain that time as Justin Sims was wrapped up by Chris Smith. Yeah, Chris Smith read that from the start. He was in a short zone and did a perfect job. There is Chris Smith. They say Chris Smith is getting a few looks from NFL scouts, Rob. Well, here he is. I mean, his job is to right there, hit that receiver, and once he hits the receiver, look for something short. So he's going to funnel the receiver, sees what's in front of him, and comes up to make the play. That's a perfect execution of him playing that cover two. Empty backfield on third and ten for Boucher. And they got to him on the stump as Jake Kaufman came around from that defensive end position straight up the middle and gets the sack of Boucher. Well, it all began on first down, creating the second and long, and then the third and long. And then you see the pressure by Kaufman, kind of a delayed stunt by him. This defensive line likes to run twists and stunts. And his stunt brought him around a little bit later, and he had a free lane. Kick from Wilbur. And Davis secures it at the 27. A good defensive play by Kaufman. Huskies on offense when we come back. It's a 60s post much for greatness. Championship on the line here, Northern Illinois, up 14 to 13. Speaking of scores of interest, Rob, mm -hmm. our fantasy football season results are in, <laughs> and we lost to ESPN Radio's Colin Coward. Yeah, yeah, good job by Colin. Although you had a nice week, uh, you know, about time. Uh, I think there was a consultant helping Colin. It might have been two. Oh, Andrew yeah. from our production crew. Yeah. He was the uh, weekly consultant on Colin's picks, but. Well, you had a really nice week a couple weeks ago. I, I'm building Bobby for next Rainey season. from Western Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. 40 points. Yeah, I, I wanted to get him in the lineup all season. I probably should have used him earlier. It would help me a lot more. Chandler Harnish. Hand off to Span. Here's a guy that's been a fantasy football wonder player here, Chad Spann. See the Max player of the year. See the balance he showed on that run there? He's being grabbed, yet he's able to keep his foot, his feet underneath him, get to the outside and pick up another three or four yards. Really, really good balance. A former walk-on. <laughs> he wasn't too happy about that. No, he was quick to talk about uh, his recruiting process. And he wanted to be here at Northern Illinois, and they rewarded him with a scholarship, and he has rewarded them well through the years. Run to pick up the first down there. Well, they told him initially, you know, didn't have room scholarship and invited him to walk on, and he had a chip on his shoulder, and two weeks into camp, he earned that scholarship. But you see they've got a number of walk-ons who are starters here at Northern Illinois, and all of them for all conference. Well, Jake Kaufman is more than all conference. He's a young man, came up with that defensive play also. He served in the military, had a couple tours of duty in Iraq, and this is a team of some real strong characters here. Harnish over the middle and wide open was Nathan Palmer. Went up for it and brought it down, and now this Huskies offense is in gear. Well, there's such a threat to go deep that the coverage goes with anyone who's running deep. Clark runs everybody off. Now watch how much protection Harnish has here. Plenty of time, and that protection allows Clark, number 10, to run off the coverage, and then they can bring Palmer back underneath on a crossing route. Span. Flag comes down at the end as Span was trying to get to the corner. DJ Brown and Evan Harris were with him there. Holding. Offense. Number 34. 10 yard penalty. Repeat. First down. And that's the fullback scar. Saturday afternoon, ABC delivers the number two team in the country. Well, Michael James and the Oregon Ducks going up against their rivals, the Beavers from Oregon State. Win, and the Ducks are into the BCS Championship. As simple as that. It's college football presented by K Jewelers at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. 
on ABC. You know, that Oregon State offense, to me, hasn't been the same since they lost James Rogers. Just not quite the same. Stanford shut him out last week. Not the season they were hoping for. Harnish met right at the line of scrimmage. Jordan Brown stayed at home and found Chandler Harnish. You know, that Civil War, you know, the last couple of years, the Rose Bowl has been at stake in that game. Last year, both teams had it on the line. Two years ago, Oregon State needed to win to get to the Rose Bowl, and Oregon dumped them 65-38 or something like that. Oregon trying to get themselves to the PCS national title game. The 114th meeting between Oregon and Oregon State. So the penalty and then the minimal gain is second and 19. This man picks up about three and a half that time. Tackled by Ryan Kennedy. Ryan Kennedy had been the starting outside linebacker at the beginning of the year, but then injuries got in the way, and now he's worked his way back. He worked his way back and really helped this defense pick it up during this midseason. You know, early on, you could not have determined that Miami of Ohio would get to this championship game. The offense picked up, the defense picked up, and they just continue to find ways to win games. And then Ohio lost. Hey, listen, they were on Thanksgiving break, sitting back enjoying time with their family, yeah. and Ohio was upset. And that put Miami in this game. Third and 17 now for Harnish. Has time, downfield, and dropped by Nathan Palmer. It was going to be another touchdown for Harnish. He had to take his eye off of it at the last second. Instead of, the, instead of catching the ball up high, he lets the ball come from his over his head down to the, the numbers. So the level of the ball drops, and it looks like 24 Stevens in coverage may have waved, and that might have distracted him a little bit, but it's harder to catch that ball lower as opposed to up higher. Missed opportunity. Now Josh Wilbur on to punt. This ball takes a good bounce for Northern Illinois and runs out at around the five-yard line. Now Palmer and Harnish off on the sideline. What could have been? This is a 19-foot subalpine fur. This year, we have our own personal Santa. We've done the whole cardboard reindeer thing, so, you know. It's a 60s postmodern ginger. Yeah, how about that? The 2010 Marathon Mac Football Championship. Innovative thinking you'll find, you'll find it in Acura. And American Pickers, Mike and Frank are back for all new episodes on history. That is the Shriners Festival of Lights here in Detroit. Detroit Shriners are for the city. This holiday extravaganza spans one mile, 300 light displays. We had our own light display in that first quarter. They put up 27 <laughs> points yeah, they did. on the scoreboard, these two teams. The Marathon <laughs> Mac Championship between Miami and Northern Illinois. Boucher to pass from his end zone. That was dangerous there as the ball Jefferson got up and batted it down. That's the second one he's had knocked down, and that's because coming into this ball game, Northern Illinois knew they threw a lot of short passes, a lot of three-step, and the defensive linemen were told, get your hands up because they will throw quick passes. That's the second one they've knocked down by getting those hands up. Good job by Jefferson. Boucher told you only his third start of his career. Zach Dysart, who was the Starting quarterback was injured. But Boucher 2 and 0 as Miami's starting quarterback. This one he swings out and gets it complete to Armand Robinson. Let's check in with Ryan Burr. Ryan. All right, the Bulls and Celtics ready to tip over on ESPN. Paul Pierce getting ready to roll here. Chicago, Boston, a couple first place teams, part of the NBA doubleheader on ESPN tonight, guys. Thanks, Ryan. All eyes were on the NBA 
last night. And everybody cringed. At least, at least for about two oh, minutes before man. that score got out of control. Oh. Watching LeBron's that was return to Cleveland. Ugly quickly. And then everybody turned over to see there was one of the more entertaining <laughs> college football games. Great job the Thursday night crew did this year. And that was a nice way to cap it last night with that game. And being chased down was Boucher. Tyrone Clark. So good work by the Huskies defense. And they'll benefit with field position here. Hey, Tess, take a look right here and right here. What you're going to get is that delayed blitz and then a little zone drop off here and a little confusion for the offensive line. And it works perfectly. They get the pressure inside because they don't pick it up and Rita Clark is able to get in and make the sack. So now Zach Murphy will be punching from the end zone. Tommy Davis awaits at midfield. There's a short punt and downs just outside the 40-yard line. Building a program is brought to you by Craftsman. Miami has done a nice job. You see, back in 2009, one and eleven turned the program around eight and four. That's as big a turnaround as anybody. You see what Maryland has done. How about? What Mark D'Antonio did at Michigan State and a little help from Don Treadwell, offensive coordinator, stepped in to run that program when D'Antonio was in the hospital. 11-1 of Co-Big Ten Championship. Treadwell's another name that is up for that Indiana job. Yep. Michael Haywood, of course, he's getting a lot of respect for what he's done. Jordan Lynch now coming in at quarterback. And Lynch going to put it downfield and throws it short. He had a wide open Willie Clark. Yeah, well, Lynch is the Wildcat quarterback, and he runs the ball. He only had five passes coming into the game. So they were trying to break their tendency and catch Miami of Ohio sleeping. They figure, oh, Wildcat guy, he's going to run it. They bring him in, and then they work on Brown and try and get by him again. And Lynch just did not have it. Maybe not loose enough. So Lynch heads over to the bench and Harnish comes back in. The give to Kreider. And Kreider with a gain of nine. Well, you know, when Lynch comes back in the ball game, I, I, I still think you'll see Miami going, okay, throw it if you want. Indeed. Oops, we're going to dare you. And he's the Wildcat quarterback. Doesn't throw too much. And now you know he's itching for another opportunity. You know he's going to plead with the coaches. Give me one more shot. He's had some big touchdown runs this yep. year as Lynch. He's gone for 90, 81, 61 yards. Span comes in on third and one with Harnish. And Span unable to get the necessary yardage. That was a good play by Pat Hinkle, the free safety for Miami. Yeah, Hinkle did a very nice job sneaking around the line of scrimmage. Short yardage. You want your safeties to get up and make plays, and Hinkle does exactly that. Left side of the screen comes downhill in a hurry, misses the wide receiver, doesn't let him block him, and just gets in and makes a tackle. Great job. And they're going to go for it on fourth down. Span. Nope. Great job penetrating that backfield, that entire front line of Miami. You saw Wedge and Gafford fill the holes, the Brown and Sims, and that whole group just pushing back that offensive line for the Huskies. Well, that defensive line reestablished the line of scrimmage a yard into the backfield. You see the penetration up front? Wedge is able to get in there, but Brown, 79, and Brown, 90, reestablished that line of scrimmage. So a much needed defensive stand. Remember, they were punting from their end zone. They gave up the game of field position, and then their defense does the job. Cinderella is alive and well. Boucher. He's trying to get it out to Payne. 
Well, Sunday night, we're going to get you all set. 8.15 Eastern, it is the final BCS countdown show. Rod and the gang will go through the BCS Bowl matchups, reveal the standings there. Then at 9 Eastern, the Bowl Selection Special, the BCS countdown presented by Tostitos, the Bowl Selection Special presented by Chevrolet Cruise, Sunday on ESPN. Well, not just that. We're going to have you there, too. Heismanology. Heisman stuff is important right now. It was a big talk about this week, wasn't it? Cam Newton controversy. Boucher to Robinson, and he goes upfield with a good gainer past midfield. Armand Robinson squared up those shoulders and turned it on. Well, he's a big guy, too. 6'1", 6'2", 200 pounds. He is a talented receiver. They love to get him the ball down the field. You hit him in full stride there, and not a whole lot of want to to get in front of him. Watch the one-handed catch here. Manages to pull that thing in. You know, it's a good thing he was running full stride there because he actually ran through the catch and continued exactly. on of just getting a grasp of it with his fingertips. Boucher looking for options, and he's going to throw this one away. Hey, by the way, I'm excited. I'm excited for this Sunday night, Rod. Oh, yeah. Of seeing how everything plays out mm -hmm. here, who's in what bowl, how the BCS is going to break. Yeah, you know, there are the rules about where the... BCS Bowl teams are supposed to go. But there's also the possibility. Deals can be made. Yeah, well, <laughs> we've been hearing a lot of yes. that, haven't we? Deals can be made. The politics of college football. <laughs> and they're going to take a timeout. And we will take it with them. 4.23 to go in the half. Northern Illinois up 14-13. Proud to stand. Both touchdown catches by Martel Moore has Northern Illinois up 14-13 here in the Marathon MAC Championship game. Celebrating its six years, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal, Nets Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Today, date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.4 million in scholarship monies. So after the timeout, a second and 10 for Miami. They bring a little pressure after Boucher, and once again, Rod, it is batted down. Yeah. Well, it's that same thing. A lot of three-step quick releases, and the defensive linemen were taught, get your hands up. I mean, that's a big part of what they do at Miami. And that time it was Kraus, 58, that left hand got it up there. Great strategy coming in. I mean, that's what Miami showed all season, but they opened the game throwing the ball down the field. Now they settled back into their quick game again. Well coached up front. So third and 10. For the first year player, Boucher. That time he was trying to get Robinson crossing, and it goes incomplete. Well, you understand it. I mean, they're trying not to keep him in, put him in tough situation. Third and long, you don't want him to have a five-step and try and deliver the ball down the field. This is only his third start. There's Zach Dicer over there cheering on that group. A lacerated spleen three weeks ago. They think he could return for their bowl game. But in the time being, it is Boucher who tries to lead the Red Hawks. Well, you've gone from a four-year starter to a redshirt freshman making his third start. Murphy. On sales and is down at about the seven-yard line. Let's check in with Ryan Byrne in the studio for a look at what's coming up in the college football halftime report. Thanks so much, Joe. Coming up at the half, I'll be joined by Mark May and Lou Holtz. The guys will square off on who will win the SEC title game, South Carolina or Auburn. Kirk Herbstreit gives us a blueprint if Oregon State was to beat Oregon. Plus, we'll run through all the games on Championship Saturday. Joe and Rod, it's coming up in a few. We'll see you then. Thanks, Ryan. Rod, who will win the SEC title game? Ooh, wow. You know, I just think it's Auburn's year. Well, it looks that way. I, you start looking through the season they yeah, put together and I, all I, these close games. And I think, I think Cam Newton has gotten better <laughs> from midseason on throwing the football. I think that's a tough challenge to beat them in that ballgame. Jordan Lynch back in, the running quarterback, and that's exactly what he does. Muscles his way out across the 10. Rod, Auburn has trailed 
in eight of their 12 wins this season. Well, there's something about being tested, something about being challenged. You know, tennis players call it tournament tough mm. when you have to play late into matches. Auburn's done that all year, so getting behind, being in a close game doesn't seem to bother them. They've dealt with it. Harnish back in now for the Huskies offense. Sprints to the far side. Harnish going to tuck it and run. And they're a couple yards short of the first down. One of the interesting things that comes up is what would happen if Auburn were to lose that ball game. Would a one loss Auburn still be valued over an undefeated TCU or could someone else get in another one lost team? Very interesting how people are now looking at TCU in the wake of the Boise loss. I think people were prepared for Boise surging ahead, but not necessarily the scenario with TCU. I'll tell you what. Here's Span and he picks up the first down. Good run out to the 25. Please inform. Well, it's the precedent. You know, Boise State had a marquee win over Virginia Tech team, and they were also dominant. So people were buying into, okay, well, if that's the standard, if Boise State gets there, we get it. When you look at TCU, you don't find the dominant win over an AQ team, and you don't find the dominance. So what happens next year if you put TCU in the game this year? I see. Your precedent is, well, all you have to do is win your games. You don't have to beat anybody. You don't have to be dominant. Harnish has time. He's going deep again. And this is well beyond Landon Cox. You know, and that's not to say that TCU hasn't had a great year. And it's not to say that they're not deserving of a BCS bowl game. The Rose Bowl's great. Sugar Bowl's oh, great. Oh, sure is. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you are establishing what does it take, to play in the national championship game when you don't go through the tough schedule that the AQs do, if you lower that standard, you got to be prepared for what you get next year. Right. I've heard a lot of people say this week, listen, TCU's a team capable of winning the national Absolutely. championship. They are a great football team. But the resume and what they put forth and what they've accomplished doesn't deserve an opportunity to play for the national title. Second and 10, and Harnish is ridden down by Evan Harris. The thing that has surprised me is the Miami of Ohio defense and the way they've been able to step up and make key plays, even after giving up the two big touchdown throws. Evan Harris, he's one of the guys that said, hey, we like being the underdog. No, they've been playing that role well, Mike Haywood's team. Take a look back. At the first quarter in real time, brought to you by Wendy's. Well, we had an awful lot of scoring in that first quarter. Merriweather got in early on, opening drive to put his team up. Harnish came right back. Martel Moore, big touchdown pass over Brown. And then Woods, once again, on this second drive, got into the end zone. And Moore continued his exploits, working against Brown again for his second touchdown reception of the evening. He had a 69-yard touchdown pass, and then you just saw the 27-yard touchdown pass. It was a wild first quarter. A missed extra point by Miami. The difference on the scoreboard as it stands now. 324 total yards in the first quarter. Yeah, and how about the rushing attack from Miami? A team that's 12th in the MAC in rushing has done a tremendous job running the football tonight. And now a third and 20 for Northern Illinois. Harnish steps up in the pocket looking for options. And that is batted down by Brandon Stevens. You cannot do it any better than that. Reaching around with the right hand by Brandon Stevens left hand behind in perfect position on Willie Clark. Watch. Turns around, left hand off, right hand there. Now putting that left hand down around the back is fine. You can touch the receiver. What you cannot do is turn the receiver. So long as you don't turn the receiver, it's not pass interference. Wilbur's punt to Marco Payne. Calls for the fair catch. 
at about the 39-yard line. So all of a sudden, the defenses after that <laughs> wild first quarter, now the defense is coming to play here in this MAC championship. Of course, we invite you to start your day tomorrow morning with ESPNU at 9 Eastern, college game day built by the Home Depot. Then at 10 a.m., you move over to ESPN. They're in Corvallis, Oregon, the Civil War, Oregon and Oregon State. Do you have any idea how rocking it's going to be in well, Corvallis? We've, we've done games up yeah, there. Right? And that That's is a great setting. Game day there. Those folks are going to love having Desmond, and Kurt, Aaron, Chris Fowler around. That, that's, that's big time up there. And here's Woods, Tracy Woods. Still fighting for a bit of yardage. He gets it out to the 43-yard line. So you have to remember the little complex that they have up there in Oregon because in, in Eugene, they're used to getting game day and the like. The Corvallis folks, hey, they've never had game day before. This is this is big. This is huge for them. And I know they've struggled this year, but they will come and give their all in that game. That is for sure. Payne. He tries to fight. Gets out to the 47 yard line. I don't think there's a coach who is more respected in college football than Mike Riley by his peers and players. He's he's outstanding. Now DCS top two teams in the final week of the season, they have struggled historically. And this is complete. A good shot that time for Boucher to Robinson. Good confident throw by Boucher to just settle down and put it to Robinson. He's played this way all night. I mean, they've kind of freed him to throw the ball deep, and he's thrown with confidence. He's actually been better with the mid-range passes than the short passes. Yeah, Devon Butler coming right after him. Minutes ago here, Boucher. Just a gain of two that time. Jake Kaufman chased him down from behind. That clock will continue to run down as Mike Haywood, second-year head coach, trying to see if he can take the lead in the final moments of this half. One timeout remains. Coming up on a half minute to go in the half. Boucher. Pressure came from the ball. Jefferson. Jefferson's had a good first half. Batted down a couple passes and applying some pressure. Or now you think clock management, young quarterback, 32 seconds, one timeout, third and eight. You want the first down. You are willing to use your timeout right now to throw over the middle and pick up the first down. The clock will stop if you pick it up. But if you need time, you can, you can use that timeout. They've got plenty of time. Get the play in. The play clock is down under 10 now on third and eight. Oh, you better hurry. Boucher, here comes the pressure, got to escape it. And is able to connect, it'll be short of the first down, but Chris Gibbons right near the sideline, and the clock continues to run, so they'll be forced into a timeout situation. And they just realized it. He can't, he can't believe that the clock didn't stop there. Well, yeah, they didn't realize it. Now, whoa, 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 what are they doing? You can't do that. They have a timeout to use. Oh, no. They did not And it's fight fourth that. and one. You cannot oh, do that. Oh, no, they didn't. Is he saying we didn't have a timeout? I think there may have been some confusion with the coaches. Jerry Kill upset. He thinks they dodged a bullet here as they will reward them. Well, Boucher the was timeout clearly request. trying to call for the timeout. And it, they apparently waved him off, which is when he decided to try and spike the ball. Can't spike it on fourth down. No, it's a turnover on downs if you do. But he was clearly asking for the timeout. So here's the third down play. And you see the clock in the lower right hand of the screen. Watch the clock here as Gibbons, and I think they made the assumption that Gibbons went out there. Yeah, and you see the official. Yep, winding the clock. No stoppage. Clock winding down. Now, at this point, there you see Boucher. They're timed out at 14 seconds. Yeah, and he's asking for the timeout, and they waved him off. And he didn't realize it was fourth down, but now they've corrected it. They gave him the timeout. They will have the field goal attempt. Trevor Cook 
two for five this year from this distance. This is a 42-yard attempt. And that is blocked. Well, we saw some kicking issues last night. We're having some tonight. Is it an omen for the weekend? Second time that Trevor Cook has had a kick blocked here tonight. The first extra point of the night was blocked. And now this field goal attempt at the end of the half. Well, that one is blocked. It looked from the inside like it was Kaufman. Kaufman and Chris that. Smith on the outside and Kaufman right up the middle. Yeah, that was Kaufman, Kaufman. with the left hand. The six foot five defensive end getting his mid up to reject it. Let's join Ryan Burr, Lou Holtz, and Mark May back in the studio for the college football halftime report. Gentlemen. All right, Joe, we got a good one brewing in Detroit. 14 13, Northern Illinois on top of Miami, Ohio at the half. Welcome in, Ryan Burr, the coach, Lou Holtz, and Mark May. And guys, this is supposed to be a blowout. Northern 25th in the country, a big favorite. Miami of Ohio doing a nice job hanging in. Well, Miami got a great start, you know, with Thomas Merriweather, the running back, ripped off about a 40-some-yard run early in the ball game. That gives you momentum. That gives you impetus. And Austin Boucher has really done a nice job as a quarterback for Miami. When they go downfield, they have more success than they do just trying to dump the ball off. I'm really they... impressed with Miami's defense. Mike Hayward's done, Hayward's done a great job with his defense coming into this game, getting prepared for the MAC championship game because the bottom line is they're 50th in scoring defense coming in. Northern Illinois in their last three games in conference – Average 65 points a game offensively. They've held them to 14 in the first half. A lot of confusion at the end of the half, as you could see. Miami wasn't sure if they had a timeout or not. Only one player really realized they did. Number 11, smart enough to call for the timeout. But how is that kid not out of bounds, Coach? Well, what the official ruled that his forward momentum was stopped. He wasn't going any further. I thought it was a bad call. She was knocked out of bounds. But that's the decision the referee has to make, that his momentum was not going forward, and he was to make contact inbound. But well, here's the key. There's confusion. And the quarterback wants a timeout. The sidelines are saying, go run a play. No, it's fourth down. They're very fortunate in this situation to get the opportunity. Watch number 11 right there, Amon Robinson. Comes to the sideline, goes in for the timeout, timeout. He knows they've got one timeout left. Yeah, he well, saves the day, but of course they missed the field goal anyways. Well, you know, there's a scoreboard that says how many timeouts you have. There's three bulbs up there. When they're lit up, you have a timeout. When there's only no, one bulb lit, no, that means you no, got one no. timeout. You're not getting off the hook. The coaching <laughs> staff told him to go quarterback to go run the play. They weren't aware on the sidelines that they had a timeout left. In this situation, it's a two-minute situation. It's game clock managers. The coaches have to be in charge of game clock management. Unless you have a senior quarterback that's been out there for four years yeah. as a starter, it's the coach's decision. I, I, I will agree with you. The coach's decision completely on that, and the coaching staff did not make a good decision on it. Make no mistake, it was a complete error. However, I didn't notice an offensive tackle calling time. Because they were down <laughs> in the three-point stance. I will say this. We're looking forward to a great second half, 14-13 at the break. When we come back, we move on to one and two, both playing huge games on Saturday. Can they both win and move on to play for a BCS championship? The guys tell us next. Eastern on ESPN. Ryan Berlew, Holtz, and Mark May. Championship Saturday just about here. SEC championship game. Auburn beat South Carolina earlier this year, 35-27 in Auburn. Now there's a rematch. Everything on the line. Cam Newton racked up 43 touchdowns this year, 24 passing, 18 rushing. Auburn wins. They play for a BCS championship. Mark, how about the Civil War? Oregon, Oregon State. I love the way that Darren Thomas runs this offense for them. He's been spectacular. Not only throwing the ball, but running with the football. Oregon State's going to take their chances early throwing the football with Ryan Katz, but I just think there's too much offensive firepower with the Oregon Ducks. That's the reason why they're number one in scoring, number one in total offense in the nation. Keep an eye on wide receiver Jeff Mill. He comes through every week. Ducks win. They will play for the national championship. Coach, Big 12. Well, this is an old rivalry. Oklahoma-Nebraska will be the last time because Nebraska joins Big Ten, but I love Oklahoma. 
I think that Landry Jones throws the ball so well. And the problem with Nebraska is they're not sure who their quarterback's going to be. Yeah, Nebraska's very good on defense, but boy, you talk about DeMarco Murray, you talk about Ryan Wills, Landry Jones, a lot of talent. ACC May Day. These two teams once played for a national title. Now they play for an ACC title. Uh, two great quarterbacks, Christian Ponder for Florida State, but keep an eye on the rain attack of Ryan Williams of Virginia Tech. But Tyrod Taylor, very quietly, two consecutive years in a row, has led the ACC in passing efficiency. And in the Big East, Coach, a DCS game on the line for UConn. They win, they are in, they're going to get by USF. They do, and the home team's won this game, I think, the last seven times. And uh, Connecticut can run the ball very well. Zach Frazier is an outstanding quarterback. But USF has a great defense. The problem with USF, they're very banged up, and they're not sure who's going to be their quarterback, nor are they sure about the running back situation. So all things favor Connecticut, but don't underestimate USF. Well, UConn does control their own destiny. If they beat USF, they win the conference. But a UConn loss would open the door for both West Virginia and Pitt. If all three teams lose, it would be UConn. Of course, I don't think anyone is hoping for that to happen. Let's get to the SEC title game now, Auburn and South Carolina. It is a rematch from a great game earlier this year played in Auburn. The second time around, who, does, who has the advantage in this Auburn-South Carolina game? I always felt the underdog, the team that lost the first game, because they'll make whatever adjustment. For example, you can say the offensive lineman, here's where you missed up, here's the things we have to change. And the fact is that Cam Newton was a coming out game. You know, he rushed for 177 yards. Nobody really knew that much about Cam Newton until that football game. They will really be prepared. Let's remember this. South Carolina was winning at, at Auburn in the fourth quarter, and South Carolina had four turnovers in the fourth quarter. That's why they lost. And let's remember this. They were winning, yes, in the fourth quarter, and they still lost the game. The bottom line is they couldn't stop Cam Newton. No one stopped him the entire season long. They've had 12 chances this year to slow him down or stop him. None of the opponents have. They defeated him before. This team will have the confidence because they've already played South Carolina once, and they beat them. So the next time that they play him, guess what? If it gets close in the fourth quarter or they're down, they're not going to panic. They're not going to sweat. The reason why is because eight out of their 12 games, they've been behind. And you know what's happened? They've come from behind, and they've won. They've already done it 12 times. This championship game will make it to 13. Now, let me tell you, you're wrong, Mark, and let me explain to you why. Because Alabama did shut off Cam Newton's running game. The problem is Alabama could not rush the passer, could not play great pass defense. South Carolina can't. South Carolina is number two in sacks. They got tremendous pressure on the quarterback. They will be able to stop Cam Newton's running just like Alabama did, but the difference is they're going to be able to play pass defense well. And here's one other thing. Auburn's 106 in the country on pass defense. They cannot cover Ashlon Jeffrey. And Jeffrey is a stud. Will be a good one in the SEC title game. When we return on the halftime report, we move it out to game day. They get a set for all the big games on Championship Saturday. Stay with us. Yes! I got the boss's tickets on Saturday. Football! Football. They're saying snow on Saturday, too. Record lows. Old school. The frozen tundra. Winter warriors on a merciless field. Hands frozen numb. You know, I'd sell those tickets if I were you. What? Who says the best seat at the game has to be at the game? If it's lame, it's right in your living room. Now through December 6th, get an additional $50 off lame reclining furniture. Yeah, we see you. <laughs> Get the best seat at the game at lanecoupon.com. What's that adrenaline starts pumping? You just gotta embrace it. Bear Grylls, he's the ultimate man of adventure. Can he take on my sport? My sport. My sport to the next level? I challenge. I challenge. I challenge. Bear to take on the chain of adventure. Oh, we got one shot on this. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Woo! Let's give it a go. <laughs> Take on the chain of adventure at DegreeMen.com. Degree for Men Adventure Antiperspirant. It won't let you down. When an industry leader like Sony offers special deals on their high-quality products, they move pretty quickly. So Peyton and I stop by to help back, out. Back, 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 back. 40, 40, 40. Save more than $900 when you buy a Sony home entertainment package with a PlayStation 3 system. Enjoy HD, even in 3D. Visit a participating retailer for details. Well, we're off to a good start. We're selling a lot of product out. Uh, got a lot of work to do. We need a little more production out of you. to watch for 3.30 on ABC. It is the Civil War, Oregon at Oregon State. Oregon's already, of course, assured of going to the BCS title game if they can get by this final stop on the schedule in Corvallis. Let's head out to Aaron and Kirk Herbstreit, game day crew. That's where they're at.
The Civil War will be the final hurdle for the Oregon Ducks before they can head to Glendale for the national championship. It'll also be a time that Oregon State really needs a victory if they want to become bowl eligible. Their head coach Mike Riley saying this week, forget about becoming bowl eligible. We just want to end the season on a good note. We just want to end this one with some pride here. So Oregon State upsets the Ducks if. Well, I think playing at home helps their cause and being able to see if they can be able to pull off this big upset. But I think the key will be Ryan Katz, their quarterback. And Ryan Katz, in the first year starting, uh, has had a very solid year. He plays much better at home than he does on the road. He takes care of the ball. He has the ability to make big plays. Oregon will play some man-to-man. -man, and when they see the one-on-one -on -one opportunities, Katz has got to be able to find his receivers downfield. He also needs Jacquez. Rodgers, the running back, of course, who's been around to give him some, some help. He's, they've got to be able to run the ball just enough to take some of the pressure off of Katz, but Katz has a, a strong arm and a good group of wide receivers. Be honest, how worried is Oregon's defense of Katz and of Quiz? Well, they're, they're concerned about the playmaking, uh, playmaking ability of Oregon State, but I think they have confidence that Kenny Rowe and Brandon Bear and company can penetrate the Oregon State offensive line and get you know tackles for a loss and get sacks and get negative plays, which will put Oregon State, whether they're playing at home or no matter where they're playing, in tough uh, situations to be able to execute. So just four quarters for the Ducks in order to get to Glendale. That's the same situation for the Auburn Tigers who are taking on Steve Spurrier and the Gamecocks. This is round two of this matchup. So South Carolina will upset the Tigers if. Well, I think they have to protect the football, number one. The last three weeks, they're plus nine in turnover margin. And then guys like Alshon Jeff Jeffrey and Marcus Lattimore have to have a balanced attack. Let's face it, Auburn has found ways to win games, and their defense has not always been consistent. If Jeffrey can go over the top and make plays against the Auburn secondary, that keeps them in the game. For them to be able to pull off the upset and beat Cam Newton, because that's un almost unthinkable, is Newton not making a play late to win it. But if for them to do that, they need the balance attack, but they've got to ask Steven Garcia, who was benched the last time yeah. these two teams played. He's got to take care of the football and not make mistakes. And Kirk, you have to think if Spurrier has another opportunity to play a team in the same year, that has to give him an advantage. Yeah, well, there's no doubt. Uh, the one the one that comes to mind right away for me was 1996 when Florida played Florida State, Florida State yeah. in Tallahassee, and Danny Warfel got hit a lot. They met a, about a month later in the Sugar Bowl for the National Championship, and it was a totally different story. So, Steve Spurrier is still one of the deans of the game when it comes to coaching, play calling, figuring out how to attack you. But it's one thing to draw up the ball plays. It's another thing right, to have execute. to go out and execute. And again, will South Carolina avoid mistakes? When they've lost this year, it's because they've not taken care of the ball. Historic traditional storylines in Dallas this weekend for the Big 12 championship, the final one, Nebraska. They'll upset Oklahoma if. Well, they've got to be able to get enough from Taylor Martinez or whoever is a quarterback in yeah. throwing the football, believe it or not. You think about Nebraska, you think of Martinez, Roy Hallou, Rex Burkhead in their running game. But I'm telling you, the plays like that right there downfield to Kyler Reed are going to be key in this football game because if you're Oklahoma, you're loading up the line of scrimmage and you're determined to stop Nebraska's powerful running game, no matter who the quarterback is. And if you were doing that, you're a little bit vulnerable to the play-action pass. So look for Nebraska. They've got to get the ball downfield, then go back to their bread and butter, which is running the ball. And welcome back to the ACC championship game. Florida State, they're taking on Virginia Tech. Seminoles will upset the Hokies F. Well, they've got to need, need an efficient game from Christian Ponder. He's, to his credit, he has battled through injuries this year. And last week against Florida, I thought he was flawless. His leadership will be very big in this game because Virginia Tech now, their defense that was young at the beginning of the year has now become a strength. And I think Ponder's leadership, decision-making, finding a weakness and taking advantage of it, that'll be something that if Florida State can capitalize on that, then they have a shot to win this game. But I, I still like Virginia Tech. Really? Yeah. Florida State trying to go to a BCS bowl game for the first time since 2005. It's been a while for them. It's championship week. Two teams looking to make their way to Glendale, Arizona. Will we see that happen with the Oregon Ducks in Corvallis on Saturday afternoon? All right, game we're watching right now. It's a dandy halftime of the MAC championship game. NIU on top 14-13. That's Tracy Woods with a touchdown looking to pull the upset. Here's to America's real working hands. They keep our country going strong with Irwin Vice Grip tools, like our groove lock pliers that adjust with the press of a button and never slip or pinch. Irwin Vice Grip, reach for greatness. AT&T introduces a new Windows phone with beauty mm -hmm. and brains.
Now get a Samsung Focus for $199.99 and get one free. Only from AT&T. Rethink possible. Every curve, every contour, every hair. Philip Snorelco's new Sensitouch 3D. Our most advanced shave yet. It's Pizza Hut's Cheesy Bites Pizza. Your favorite Pizza Hut pizza surrounded by 28 cheese-filled bites. Now just $11.99. Add breadsticks and a 2-liter Pepsi for just 5 bucks more. The Cheesy Bites Pizza. Only $11.99 and only at your Pizza Hut. The road to success is never easy, and no one gets there on talents alone. Introducing the K-Factor, a patented system designed to help pitchers take their game to a whole new level. By combining a resistance system with basic pitching drills, the K-Factor focuses on the importance of proper mechanics. Pitchers at all levels will learn to increase arm speed, maximize the length of the arm circle, and strengthen the wrist for better snap. Use the K-Factor as part of your daily workout or during your pregame warm-up. You'll develop healthy muscle memory, build strength and endurance, add overall velocity to pitches, and achieve consistency on the mound. There has never been a tool more valuable for your performance. Order the K-Factor now and start reaching your maximum potential. Brian Burr, the coach Lou Holtz, and Mark May getting you ready for the second half of Northern Illinois and Miami, Ohio. Over on ESPN, it's the Bulls and Celtics. First quarter, Boston by four after that Paul Pierce J. And then later in the first, Mayday? Well, we're going to crown the Mac Daddy tonight, but here's the Shaq Daddy we reverse lane. Oh, the Shaq Daddy inside. Celtics up 14 to six at that point. Just a reminder, it is a double header on ESPN tonight. The Mavs and Jazz about 10 30 over on ESPN. <laughs> All right, game we're watching right now. Hopefully the second half is good as the first. It's 14-13 NIU at the half. Back to Ford Field for second half action after this final timeout. Vizio True LED powering up. Vizio Internet apps on. Activating comparability test. Increasing Beyonce. Why don't you let me? Tell me, baby, why don't you let me? When I make me so damn easy to love. To love me, to love me. Welcome to that one time of year when we all become doers. When our mittens double as work gloves and we turn every room into a project. But this year, let's trim the budget. Get some help from Martha Stewart that we can't get anywhere else and spread our money as far as our cheer. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. We're lowering the cost of tradition with fresh cut trees at fresh cut prices. We are respectful competitors. We are loyal fans. We are gracious in victory and demonstrate poise in defeat. We are leaders on the field and in the stands. We are champions in sport and in life. We are the Mid-American Conference, the new mark of excellence. Dr. Pepper Championship Weekend.
what they're playing for as we welcome you back to the 2010 Marathon Mac Football Championship, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Weekend. 14-13, blocked extra point the difference in this game. Jimmy V Week, Cancer Research on ESPN. We continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Beautiful look at Ford Field here. Joe Tessitore alongside Rod Gilmore. That was a strange first half. We had all the scoring in the first quarter yeah. and then a scoreless second quarter and the two block kicks as well. Yeah, strange. Offense early, then defense in the second quarter and not so sound in the kicking game. If you take a look at our Fidelity game track, Thomas Merriweather got things going early on. 79-yard run, touchdown, and then Martell Moore put on a show with a couple of touchdown catches in that first quarter. Miami not sound in the kicking game. Missed the PAT and also missed a field goal right before the end of the half. Coach Jerry Kill. He's seen his team go 8-0 in Mac play this year, and now an upset-minded Miami team is hanging around with the 25th-ranked Huskies. Well, and the question coming in really was whether Cinderella, Miami of Ohio, could hang in there. They weren't expected to be in this ball game. 25th-ranked Northern Illinois, powerful offense, and yet somehow Miami of Ohio is right there with them. DeMarco Payne to return for Miami. And Payne is taken down at the 18. Garrett Barnes with the special teams tackle. Yeah, you know, Tess, when you look at the first half stats, some things jump out at your total yardage. Miami's ability to run the football. Not expected to be as dominant on the ground as they have been. They didn't have that kind of a season rushing the ball, although they did run it well the last three or four weeks. You now Thomas Merriweather had that 96 yard touchdown run against Temple and opened up the game tonight with a 47 yard run. Well, he missed a lot of the first half with what looked like an ankle injury. He's back in now with Boucher out of the gun, sprinting to the near side. And no target to be found right at the last second. He chucked it as he was running out of bounds, and they mark him there at the 16. Well, again, getting into the edge, and to me, Merriweather doesn't quite look like himself out there on that ankle as he was leading Boucher to the sideline there. But we'll find out if Merriweather is, is himself. He was great in that first half until the ankle. Important to have the senior out there, too. To, you know, Boucher, obviously only the third start of his career, forced into the action with an injury to Zach Dicer three weeks ago. Merriweather, good cut back across the 20. Alex Kubo with the tackle. Well, we said it was important for Boucher to get settled because he's replacing that man, Dicer, Zach Dicer, who's had that injury, that spleen injury and been out for a while, and this is the third start for Boucher. They've been giving him a little bit more of the playbook each week, and then tonight, they were rolling the dice, taking some chances with Boucher, seeing what he could deliver. Came out throwing. Came out ready and throw the ball down the field, and it worked, got them off to a good start. And they've settled into a little bit more of their traditional offense, quick passes, and the zone read. Play clock down to two. Third and seven, Boucher gets away from the pressure. And he lunges ahead, diving for that first down. Good athletic play to keep his balance. And don't you just want to call him the water boy when you see him take off like that? That's not Bobby Boucher, that is Austin Boucher. Well, they nicknamed him the water boy as he was growing up, though, based on that movie. And he's a character. Left-handed quarterback, Cindy. But he is certainly athletic enough to make plays with his feet. You see the support he's getting from Dicer. Who knows, maybe Dicer could be back to action for their bowl game. Now he gets it to Robinson, but unable to put it into his hands as he was looking to swing it out to Armand Robinson. Robinson had a lot of success in the first half 
getting out into open space. Well, they're trying to slow down that pressure that Kaufman is bringing along with some help from Progar on the other end. A lot of short passes, a lot of screen passes. They were concerned. Ryan River Ohio was concerned about that front four and that pressure that they can put on him. Jake Kaufman not out there on the field for Northern Illinois right now. This time the screen to Tracy Woods. And Tracy Woods utilizing his blockers, and here goes Woods. Brad Bednar and Brandon Brooks, the center and the left guard, got out in front of Tracy Woods, and they just plowed ahead. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, they got pressure in the first half. They came out this half thinking in terms of slowing that down. Look at the screen developed to the left side of the screen. You see a couple of big guys out in front. Good blocks, opening up some room for them. Bednar 72 and Brooks 56. And Brooks has made a big difference since he's gotten healthy and back in the lineup. 33 yards from Tracy Woods there. Here he is again. This time inside the 35, down to the 33 where he was tackled by Kuba. And he's been able to move the ball against Northern Illinois tonight. Great composure by Boucher. <laughs> Hasn't made any mistakes. No big turnovers. Been smart with the football. Robinson. And another first down for the Red Hawks offense. Tommy Davis finally got to Armand Robinson. You know, all those screen passes, all those bubble passes, what they do is they loosen up the linebackers inside, and then they come back and they run inside them. Nice little game plan they have going now. Spread you out, run you side to side, and then punch you in the mouth. Manageable work for Boucher as well. And here is the balance that you're talking about. Yep, over 100 yards rushing, almost 200 yards passing. Almost an even distribution of plays run the pass. So a first down at the 27. Boucher over the middle. And this time he gets it to Robinson inside the five. And it'll be first and goal for Miami. I tell you, he's playing with a lot of confidence. He puts this ball on the money. Gets protection, watch the throw. Steps into it nice, a lot of confidence, looking nowhere else, puts it right on the money. And all those screen passes, slowing down the rush, moving those linebackers. Robinson able to get in there on that post pattern with the ball right on the money. Merriweather the lone back, two tight ends on first and goal. Merriweather trying to drive those legs, and he's going to be just short. Kuba and Sobel wrapped up Thomas Merriweather. Well, they're in a good spot down here, about a yard and a half away, maybe a yard. Tend to be more of a power team down here using a couple of tight ends. But they also can run option. They have done that. Merriweather. Into the end zone. What determination. He got whacked a couple of times. But bounced right off to get to the end zone. Big hit right at the beginning. And then the second big hit comes from Sobel, 38. He bounces off Sobel. Trevor Cook out for another adventure now. This one goes through. And Miami back up by six. That was a very strong drive to open up this second half. Ten plays, 82 yards, and a thudding run by Merriweather. Mike Haywood's loving it.
walking on our own, proud to be homegrown. A familiar face and a name you know. is proud to sponsor the Mac Football Championship on December 3rd at Ford Field in Detroit. Taco Bell's $2 meal deal. Each with a Taco Bell original, Doritos, chips, and a medium soda. Three items, two bucks. Now that's a deal. So I buy a beefy five-layer burrito and drink, and you throw on the chips for free? How about you just give me two bucks, and it's all free? Let's do it. Why pay more? We're gonna have a baby. <laughs> Nissan Maxima, the four-door sports car. And there's the head, and right there's the heartbeat, and huh, you're going to have triplets. The all-new Nissan Quest, arriving January 28th. Innovation for family, innovation for all. You know her. Oh my gosh. We know diamonds. Together, we'll make her holiday. That's why only Zales is the diamond store, where you'll pay no interest if paid in full by January 2012. It's time for the Bud Light Playbook. Today, spelling counts, even in football. We're on the double trunk. Look! Oh! Hey, hey, hey. Oh, my goodness. This don't look right, fellas. Oh, guys. Turn that look! So you on the big screen. Mm -hmm. There we go. Thank you. Here we go. Never send the Z's for Bud Light. Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Never give up. To hear those words is enlightening and empowering. Raising money for cancer research, it's a fight, but it's one that I intend to win. We ask you to help us beat cancer. The V Foundation awards 100% of direct donations to cancer research. You can text Jimmy V to 85944. Ron is a Boston College alumnus. I can't tell you how happy I was to see Mark Herzlick out on the field this year. As a football fan, I can't tell you how saddened I was with the death of Mississippi State's Nick Bell falling to cancer this fall. Yeah, that was a terrible situation. A young man lost his life to a, an aggressive and rare form of cancer. An important part of that Mississippi State program and all of college football was saddened by his passing. Just another reason to help the cause with Jimmy V. Ricky Kreider with a good return out to the 35-yard line. Once again, you can text Jimmy V to 85944 to help us beat cancer. Well, there, is, there are the great stories out there like Mark Herzlich and we're all, Herzlich and we're all so happy about, about that, but there's so much to be done and the Nick Bell cases are examples of that. Jimmy V week for cancer and you know, I think this this number three is the key, and you know, both both of us have done a lot of charity work, but 100 percent of the donations going right to research. So we're just the, taking that money, going to the right, right to the cause, and saying cause. we don't want to be discussing this in future years. We're going to get the answer. Nathan Palmer was the intended target. You saw Brandon Stevens coming up defensively. Chandler Harnish. Who has had such a successful season? You know, we talked to Harnish yesterday about playing for a title because, you know, at the end of the day, he's had a lot of success, but it means so much to play for a title. He said, Hey, listen, I still remember getting beat for the high school state title in Indiana. We were averaging 50 points a game. We lost seven zip. That stunk. And now Moore, who was his big target, the ball came loose right at the end there. That was a live football at the end of that play, and Miami looked to jump right on it, and it is indeed Miami ball. Jordan Brown came in and stripped that ball, and right now, Jerry Kill's team has got a few issues here. Miami's got momentum. Uh, Moore looked like he was trying to fight for some extra yardage. Coco comes in now. He's on 
his feet trying to get more, and that ball gets stripped by Brown and recovered by Coco. That was a smart play by Anthony Coco. Well, notice that he's not down. Remember, we've seen this before where players are on top of guys. They're still alive. It can be dangerous. You get, a, you get a turnover there. That's exactly what I think they're going to look at here. Well, the previous play is under further review. See, the concern I have about that kind of situation is the issue of safety for players. Because when you have players on top of a guy like that and people think he's down, they may actually take shots at him. As they look at this replay, we will take a break. December 11th, one college football player will transcend greatness and become a legend. The Heisman Trophy presentation, December 11th. Garnier Fruit Tea's anti-dandruff shampoo. Vice Flakes for 48 hours, guaranteed. Ever wonder how amazing it would be to experience life in another dimension? We did. Introducing a new dimension in television. Samsung 3D TV. The world's first 3D LED TV. That's the wonder of Samsung. Ah, got you, you flying kind of guy. Cool. For the first time, get all four Shrek movies in 3D and a 3D Blu-ray player when you buy an eligible Samsung 3D TV. Intensity 2 for $29.99 and get one free. Or buy a BlackBerry Curve 3G for $49.99 and get one free. It's like a blast of hydration. The new Schick Hydro. Water activated gel hydrates your skin as you shave and skin guards reduce irritation. It's the best shave for your skin. Schick Hydro for your skin. Well, it is Miami ball, Rod. It is. Brown was able to rip it out. Coco 18 was able to recover it. Confirmed by the replay officials. And I think, you know, at some point in those situations, you're going to have the competition committee look where they should look at. Just blow the whistle. When an offensive player is resting on the body of a defensive player. They take a strike after the turnover. Nick Harwell. Austin Boucher to Nick Harwell. So a quick strike moment for Miami. 35-yard reception. Hey, Tess, they see the safety come down here. Now they know they've got one-on-one -on -one coverage. And what do you do with that? No safety in the middle? Go to the post. What's Harwell do? He goes to the post. Well, this could be a costly turnover for Northern Illinois. As Miami is right back to that first and goal. Robinson now. Tries to get free, but the Northern Illinois defense collapses on him, led by Jake Kaufman. How about this? In Miami of Ohio, Cinderella, not expected to be here, has a chance to go up by two scores. They were sitting back on Thanksgiving break watching the Ohio-Kent State game, needing the upset. Ohio loses. They find out they're in the title game and now in position to make it a two-possession game here in the third. Boucher, pressure, launches it incomplete. 
Well, he wanted Robinson and Robinson doubled down there and that's what Northern Illinois should be doing and Robinson is the key guy in the red zone and you want to double him and take your chances elsewhere. And there is Robinson. 6-2 freshman. I'm still amazed at the poise that we've seen from Boucher tonight a quarterback has not taken too many crazy chances. Third and goal now. Empty backfield. Pressure off the edge. He threw that one low to the five yard line to Andy Cruz. Pressure came from Devon Butler off the edge. So did he get his hands underneath that? Yes, he did. He got his hands underneath the ball. The ball never touched the carpet. And now, an opportunity, assuming they're sound in the kicking game after the issues they've had already, they got a chance to go up here by another possession. Remember, Trevor Cook, a couple have been blocked. They fake it. And they come up short. Mike Scherpenberg. Hey, you know what? Haywood has rolled the dice a few yeah. times tonight. Yeah. That one didn't come up. No, that's, that's a little too aggressive. Tyrone Clark snuffed it out and tracked down Scherpenberg. I, I get what he's thinking, but too aggressive. You got a chance to really put this other team in a, in a tough spot. You got a chance to go up by two scores. They're heavily favored. You got a chance to really emotionally hurt them, and now you give them essentially a turnover. Scherpenberg, the backup quarterback, out of the hopeless position, does the fake. Clark is able to come in and make the tackle. I agree with you, Rod. Missed opportunity. Wouldn't a nine-point lead yep. with a big underdog like Miami look great right about now? Chad Spann is wrapped up. This front seven of Miami's defense has played well against the talented Spann. You always have to keep in mind the emotional state of your team and what you're doing. I mean, this team, an underdog, you get a chance to go up by nine in the third quarter on this team and kick the ball off. I mean, your team's feeling pretty good. And then the negative is if you don't get it, you can deflate things. Yep, and now they have one possession where you, they could go down the field, and now you no longer have a lead. Well, let's see if Miami can D up here. Span again. Nowhere to go. Great surge that time by Gerald Wedge, the junior linebacker. All Mac player. He has really come on in recent weeks. Well, hey, with Selvin's defense, come on. I did this for you. I trust you guys to keep this ball down here so that we have field position. He's counting on his defense not to give away field position here. Arnish out of the gun here on third and 11. Halfway into his own end zone. Sprints to the near side. Pressure comes. Gets rid of it. And it goes incomplete. It was battled away by Brandon Stevens. Almost intercepted. And that defense does their job for Miami. Yeah, there was no one open. No one open, and Stevens was in great position to knock this ball away. He's sitting there waiting on this. I mean, Stevens actually could have caught that ball. He stepped, he was so far in front, he just had to stand there and catch it. And so Josh Wilbur, Rod, he is right up against the back of that end zone. Nick Harwell at the 45 to return. Harwell from the 44. And they will have their possession start at the 35. Three BCS Bulbers on the line on ESPN 745, the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship, Florida State and Virginia Tech. Then on ESPN 2 at 8 Eastern, Ken Yukon and Coach Randy Edsel. What a comeback to their season. Could they get themselves into the BCS? And on ABC at 8 Eastern, Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, Oklahoma and Nebraska. I am very interested in that Big 12 Championship game. Landry Jones threw five picks last year. I want to see how he plays this year against Nebraska. I just love the two of those teams playing one last time as conference rivals. Boucher. 
He's going to throw this one away. Boy, how about this Austin Boucher, Rod? A young man who obviously hadn't had a lot of time out there on the field, was just thrown into the fire, only a third start of his career, and he goes up against an unbeaten MAC team, a top 25 ranked team in the country in a title game in a spot like this, and he's cool and composed. Well, what did he tell us yesterday? He said, you know, I have to slow myself down sometimes because I get a little excited, and he even stutters, actually. And he, he says, he talked about that. Yeah, he said, gotta, gotta slow myself down, he says, and that helped him. He's been playing within himself tonight. And so that means Zach Dyser. Here he is on second and 10, trying to set up the screen, and that's gonna lose yardage. Tracy Woods taken down by Darnell Bolden. Tyrone Clark had pressure on Boucher, so that'll back him up to a third and 14. Well, Tess, you always have to figure out where the pressure's coming from and pick it up. And this time, the offensive line miscommunication did not see it, and there's the pressure running free again once more inside Clark with nobody in front of him. We need to get to the 25. Pressure right up the middle. He lofts it, looking for Hartwell, and he overthrows him. Coverage came from Chris Smith. Well, a lot more blitzing out of Northern Illinois, and they didn't hit home, but it disrupted the timing, which, which is why Boucher was off on the throw. He got rid of it a little bit sooner than he wanted. Zach Murphy said eight punts down inside the 20 this year. Tommy Davis with his heels up against the 10. What is your emergency? The intern forgot the donuts for the status meeting. Bingo. Bang. That's right. We put a turbo in a sport cross. The all-new Nissan Juke. Innovation for success. Innovation for all. How about the taste of a barbie on the beach this holiday? Come on into Outback and try our special sirloin served with our freshly grilled lobster tails. It's here for a limited time at just $14.95. And purchase $100 in gift cards, get a $20 bonus card free. It's always fresh in the Outback. The stage is set at the world's most famous arena as a doubleheader boasting four top 15 teams tips for a very special cause, the Jimmy V Classic. The action begins Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. I want to ride. I want to ride. I want to ride. I want to ride. Tis the season to get on a Honda. Because right now we're offering fixed APR financing as low as 0.99%. Up to $2,000 in total incentives and more. So get to your Honda dealer for great deals on gifts that go. Trophy and new Garnier Fruit Teas anti dandruff shampoo 48 hour plate control guarantee. Nice holiday scene here in Detroit. Alongside Rod Gilmore, I'm Joe Tessitore. 
Miami up 20 to 14 on 25th ranked Northern Illinois. Huskies with nine straight wins coming into this game, but I'll tell you, the Red Hawks have come to play. Flag comes in as Span goes down. He's corralled right at the line of scrimmage. Offside, defense, number 94. Five yard penalty, repeat, first down. I know you noticed this because we saw so much of that pistol offense last week with Nevada. We're seeing it also tonight mm -hmm. with Northern Illinois. It seems to be showing up all over the country. Wasn't it great when we were talking to Chris Alt last week, the head coach at Nevada, and Alt said, I get such a kick yeah. out of seeing my offense everywhere across the country. But interestingly, yeah. he said, but I love watching it because I like to see what I can learn from others who exactly. are using it, yeah. what they're doing with People it. People are taking it and adding on to it, changing it a little bit. He thinks it's wonderful. Harnish is going to air it out. And he couldn't connect with Landon Cox. Let's check in with Ryan Burr. Ryan? All right, Joe, just checking out the ESPN family of networks over on ESPN. We have a four-point game in the NBA. Celtics by four over the Bulls. Good one on ESPNU. Battle of Philadelphia, Big East, Atlantic, 10 rivals, Villanova, and St. Joe's. A six-point game. And, of course, we got a grudge match here for the MAC title, 20-14. to 14. Miami looking to pull off the shocker. Joe, Rod? And Villanova playing some college hoops tonight. Will we in future years be broadcasting a Villanova TCU Big East football game? Well, Rod. That's, that's a rumor out there. It's Chad Spann. How about this front seven of Miami? Jason Sims and Evan Harris getting in against Spann, and this is not what Jerry Kill is used to seeing. Oh, no, no. They have been shut down tonight. We're talking about an offense that was number one in the MAC in running the football almost 280 yards a game, great on third down, scoring almost 40 points a game, and they have been stifled tonight, totally stifled on the ground, 55 yards. Third and five. Pressure up the middle, they pick it off, and the first down as he's able to get it to Cox. Ricky Kreider did a good job in pass protection that time. Well, Cox does a nice job showing you why he's considered to have some of the better hands on the team here. Look at that. Oh, nice grab. Stretches out. He's big, 6'3", 220. How about the way Brown has responded at corner? He's actually played pretty well since giving up those touchdown passes early on to Moore. Span now on first down. They are bottling up Chad Span. This is the player of the year in this conference. The guy who goes for over 100 yards a game, 20 rushing touchdowns on the year, but he's not finding much tonight, Rod. Well, they've committed an extra guy to the box so that they have eight guys defending the run, and they made it tough for them to run, which is why they were able to get that single coverage mm -hmm. on Brown and beat him a couple times. Now, Brown has kind of tightened up his coverage, and they haven't really gone back after him too much. They've not beaten him deep since the first half. Uh, I mean, you pointed it out. That was going to be the big question, how did D.J. Brown respond after giving up the two plays to Martell Moore and now he's locking down and enabling that front seven front eight to do their job and this is well defended that time as Willie Clark had the reception but Brandon Stevens was quick to get to him well I think Brown is playing better because he's doing more fundamentally correct things out there I mean he's giving a little bit more room so he doesn't get beat deep but he's also actually backpedaling out now and not jumping and settling in and they can't get behind him right now so I think that's a nice adjustment for him. It's helped their defense. It's helped their run defense. And they're a lot more confident, confident about playing the deep ball. Coach Mike Haywood looking for his defense to step up here on third and five. Chandler Harnish from the gun. Has time downfield and has a man. That's Willie Clark. So a first down for Northern Illinois. Yeah, and Brown was laying off, giving the short route. He's protecting against that deep ball, and Clark just ran the comeback and picked up the first down. Jerry Kill has been trading quarterbacks a few times tonight, and now he goes with Jordan Lynch. 
as the running quarterback here on first down. Here goes Lynch. Now to the 48. Sunday night, we've got all the answers for you. It is the final BCS countdown show, 8.15 Eastern. We will reveal the BCS standings, the BCS Bowl matchups. Then at 9, the Bowl Selection Special, the breakdown of all the Bowls. BCS countdown presented by Tostitos. Bowl Selection Special presented by Chevrolet Cruz. Where will your team be? That's the question. That's why you tune in. Able to get it to the big tight end, Shepler, and Shepler over across the 40-yard line. And now Northern Illinois is piecing together a drive here into Miami territory, Rod. Keeping the drive alive is key. Now remember, we still go back to the missed opportunity as we take a look at the BCS standings and what we're going to be talking about Sunday night. There you see where it sits. If, or, if Auburn or Oregon should lose, will TCU move up or will a one-loss team be in the mix? Come to the end of the third quarter here. Now, we're going to be deciding a championship in 15 minutes. It has been a good game. Can Miami hold on and pull off the upset? Stay with us. Oregon, Oregon State. Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Water damage strikes fast. So do we. When you call the cleanup specialist at 1-800-SERVE-PRO. Like it never even happened. Rated M for Mature. There's only one vehicle tough enough to play in this world. The 2011 Jeep Wrangler Call of Duty Black Ops Edition. With a redesigned interior, the new Jeep Wrangler remains one tough 4x4. At Wendy's, we start with a whole russet potato. Naturally, we slice it, then sprinkle it with sea salt and serve it hot and crispy for a taste that's as real as it gets. Wendy's new natural cut fries with sea salt. You know it's real. Holiday, oh, holiday, and the best one of the year. But it's not a holiday, Don't you just love the holidays? Here's to America's real working hands. They keep our country going strong with Irwin Vice Grip tools. Like our groove lock pliers that adjust with the press of a button and never slip or pinch. Irwin Vice Grip. Reach for greatness. Hey, he went to Jared. He definitely went to Jared. That's a peerless diamond. That's the ideal, ideal cut diamond. What? Jared has five times the selection of ordinary jewelry stores with thousands of loose diamonds and hundreds of settings to create your own one-of-a-kind ring. That's an extraordinarily beautiful moment. Yo, man, you crying? No. That's the power of selection. That's Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Water damage strikes fast. So do we. When you call the cleanup specialist at 1 800 Serve Pro, like it never even happened. <laughs> Do you have a payphone? <laughs> hey there, guess what? What? Everything's gonna be totally fine. Who is this? My name. Yeah. It's Keith Stone. Keith Stone? You're so smooth. Always. Smooth brood Keystone Light is always smooth, like Keith Stone. They've been playing the Marathon Mac Championship game here at Ford Field in Detroit for six years now. 
came into tonight's game with a lot of people looking at this Northern Illinois team. Went 8-0 in the MAC, 25th ranked in the country, coming off some big impressive wins, saying watch out for this squad. But right now it's Miami with a six-point lead. Harnish. How about that? Really quick. What a way to start the fourth quarter. And Rod, it was against DJ Brown. Well, yeah, they went after him again. And he stopped his back pedal. They faked the run. And he looked into the backfield. And they ran right by him. Take a look. This stutter step here. He looked into the backfield. And Clark got behind him. Young man's had a, a tough night out there on the corner. As Northern Illinois has gone after him time and time again. And he settled in for a while, but they got him on that one. And Klamowski breaks the tie. So Northern Illinois goes back up on top. Remember, miss an extra point after Miami's first touchdown of the night. Well, let's go back also to the fact that they had an opportunity to go up by nine points and went with the fake field goal and didn't get it. And instead of having a two possession lead, they left the door open and now they're behind by one. Willie Clark, the 39 yard touchdown reception to open up the fourth quarter. Chandler Harnish. Junior who has led this team through such a successful year. Got to be sound in the kicking game. And they have not been in Miami. A blocked PAT cost them a point early. Missed a field goal, blocked field goal right before the half. And then the fake field goal, which would have put them up by nine points, did not come through for them. And now they're behind by one. I think Mike Haywood knows that he's going to have to Take some chances tonight to try to pull this upset, but that was one that you didn't like at all. No, nope, nope. we were not in favor of that one, not at that time. And here is Danny Green. And Green looking for some extra room there on the sideline. He's able to get out just past the 30 yard line. Let's go back and look at the touchdown strike. Harnish yeah. to Clark. Uh, here's Clark, and here's the coverage here. Now, watch what happens with the quarterback, Harnish, out here. Harnish is going to fake this run, and as he fakes that run, look at what happens here. Now you have foot stoppage out there by your corner, Brown, looking in the backfield. Didn't realize that it was actually going to be a pass at that point. Gave up some room. Clark gets behind him. That's the third touchdown pass, and Harnish knows he's... Been on the money again. Fifth lead change of the game. Thomas Merriweather just gobbled up that time by Brian Lawson. What a play by Lawson. Whoa. I tell you, Merriweather started out really, really hot. 79 yards early. Since then, what? He's had about four carries for eight yards or so. And watch the penetration right up front. Lawson straight in his face. Great form tackle. Nowhere to go with that. Center Brad Bedner blown off the line by Lawson that time. And the crowd from North Illinois on their feet trying to fire up this defense now that they have the one point lead again. That was thrown behind Nick Harwell. Austin Boucher now feeling some fourth quarter pressure. Well, his challenge is to continue to play loose and with poise. And not let the moment get to him. Grace under pressure. Third and 13. Boucher. And Robinson is wrapped up immediately by Tommy Davis. Great, great defensive call. They bring the pressure to force you to throw the ball quickly. 
and get the, the short throw so that you can make the quick tackle. They want the ball to come out quickly and then rally the tackle. Good defensive call there. Zach Murphy on the punt for Miami. Fair catch by Davis at the 20. So the defense did their job. Now Harnish and company back on offense when we return. Rated M for Mature. There's only one vehicle tough enough to play in this world. The 2011 Jeep Wrangler Call of Duty Black Ops Edition. With a redesigned interior, the new Jeep Wrangler remains one tough 4x4. <laughs> Close enough just isn't good enough. If your car is in an accident, make sure it's repaired with the right replacement parts. Take the scary out of life with Travelers. Call or click now for an agent or quote. Is it the end of TV as you know it? first full LED 3D TV and the only LED TV that's THX certified for picture quality. So, is it a TV or something better? Game. Our coverage spotlight brought to you by Travelers Insurance. Well, and that coverage is being provided by that Miami of Ohio defense on Chad Span, averaging 100 yards a game coming in, over 1,200 on the season. He's been held to 47 yards rushing on 15 carries. This Miami of Ohio defense has throttled him, held him down, and he is an explosive, explosive player but has not been able to get it done tonight against that Red Hawk defense. Jordan Lynch back in at quarterback for Northern Illinois. Bobbled the ball at first and then slithers ahead to the 26-yard line, tackled by Wedge. And you know that defense has played well against the run, but D.J. Brown has had issues on the corner, giving up three touchdown passes. They've now taken him out of the game, and... I don't know if he'll get back or not, but it's all about confidence. It is all about confidence, and I think they've determined that his confidence is a little shattered, and he needs to watch for a little bit. Freshman Demetrius Barlas is in the game. Brown is on the sideline. Second and four as Harnish comes back in. Kreider in the backfield with him. Harnish connects with Moore, and that should be spotted for a first down. Martell Moore, who exploded in the first quarter of this game with a 69-yard touchdown reception and a 27-yard touchdown catch. And that first catch that Moore made, that 69-yarder, tremendous adjustment to the ball that was thrown toward the sideline while he was inside, and he managed to get himself back outside and catch it over his shoulder. So a career-high night for Moore on only four catches. Now Lynch comes in at quarterback. And platooning here. And Lynch 
A good run by Jordan Lynch. A red shirt freshman from Chicago who they will use in this kind of a role. So three of the longest runs that they've had all year long from a backup quarterback. Yeah, solid run, solid run. And we'll see if he throws the ball again. He tried one his very first time in the ball game and didn't throw it well. But we'll probably get another shot here, considering he's running it so much. Notice Brown is back in the ball game for Miami of Ohio in the corner again. As is now Harnish, the quarterback who has gone after him. Play action. Does he take a shot here? The pressure comes in, and Harnish just trying to survive it and then chucks it, and that draws the flag. Ryan Kennedy, the strong side linebacker, was getting after Chandler Harnish. And Kennedy made a great play. You're talking about a guy who had a knee injury who missed a lot of the season. Intentional grounding. Offense, number 12. The penalty is at the spot of the foul. Lost it down. Well, the panel being at the spot of the foul, when you look at how far back he went, this is going to be a big one. Yeah, but watch Kennedy keep coming here. And you're talking about a guy who's playing with that knee brace on his right leg, having to cut and make that play. That's a tremendous play. I mean, just the mental toughness after the knee injury. Bull Reese, the longtime veteran defensive coordinator, has been around for 40 years. And he said Ryan Kennedy is a big addition having him back. We saw it there. And there is Kennedy. So a second and 25 after the intentional ground. Harnish breaks free. Big run from Chandler Harnish. 24 yards on second and 25. Well, they had trouble getting off blocks and didn't see him by the time they recognized he was gone. I mean, you see Kennedy five get swallowed up in there, couldn't get off his block, and then to the right also couldn't get off the block, and Harnish, athletic and quick, was by that first level. They're so used to seeing Jordan Lynch in the game as the running quarterback, but Harnish can run very well, so it's third and one. Span, and he fights for the first down, so what a great job by Northern Illinois to overcome the intentional grounding, cross midfield, and get a fresh set of downs. You know how deflating that is it has mentally to be. when you're out there on the field, you've got a second and forever, and you let them back in it? I mean, you're thinking you're getting off the field defensively. And that's typical of Jerry Kill football, as Mike Haywood was quick to tell us this week. He goes, listen, I, I respect Jerry Kill as a head coach as much as any coach in the country. He is so committed to what they do, and what they do best is running it and staying with their offense. <laughs> Here's Harnish now. He's trying to fight his way back, but it's going to go as a loss of three. Well, Saturday night's going to be a special night as three BCS Bull Bursts are on the line. ESPN at 745. It's the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship, Florida State and Virginia Tech. ESPN 2 at 8. Can UConn get a BCS Bowl? And ABC at 8 Eastern, the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, Oklahoma taking on Nebraska. Dr. Pepper Championship weekend tomorrow night on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. UConn, I, I got a question for you. <laughs> I got a question for you. Second and 13. Here's Span. Gain of about six. Do you remember midseason we had UConn? And everything we read in the press up there, they thought Randy Edsel had forgotten how to coach. The week they were about to play yes. West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he actually was quoted in the local papers was Coach Edsel saying, I didn't get done overnight. Well, I, I, I guess he's smart again now. He got his team back into it, and it didn't hurt that Jordan Todman just has kind of reeled it off the last four weeks. Jordan Todman. Probably not getting enough credit for the season he's had. One of the top running backs in the country. And you give Randy Etzel a top running back, and he will run all day long and play sound defense. So Miami takes a timeout. 8.48 to go to decide the MAC championship. Proud to stand on our own. Proud to be homegrown. A familiar face and a name you know. Come on. We know you. We know your needs. We know what being a neighbor means. Can you hear that? Fuel in the American spirit. No matter where, no matter where. Marathon will take you there. Marathon. 
is proud to sponsor the Mac Football Championship on December 3rd at Ford Field in Detroit. Rated M for Mature. There's only one vehicle tough enough to play in this world. The 2011 Jeep Wrangler Call of Duty Black Ops Edition. With a redesigned interior, the new Jeep Wrangler remains one tough 4x4. The granddaddy of them all. The 2011 Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. New Year's Day on ESPN. The Rose Bowl lives here. Everyone's hiding something. What can we do to keep her quiet? These guys are ruthless. Someone's covering it up. It has to stop now. <laughs> Damages premieres January 5th on Channel 101, only on DirecTV. In the NBA, you're always looking for an edge. You need to know your opponent better than they know themselves. Kobe, Carmelo, LeBron. I get my edge with NBA League Pass from DirecTV. I see every game, so I'm always ready. Are you? Watch any NBA game you want, no matter where you live. Call today. And Marathon Mac Football Championship. Brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. And Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. The holiday tree at the Woodward Fountain in downtown Detroit. It is that time of the year, the holiday season, championship football games, cold weather. That, that looks fun. I, I like the dome. Yeah, that 20-degree weather outside is not too good for me. Chandler Harnish, Northern Illinois quarterback. You see what he's done on third down tonight. Four for eight, two touchdown passes. Went to Moore twice. Here's third and eight. He's going to launch it again. And a diving effort, but it is incomplete. Out of bounds as Willie Clark was the target, but Harnish let him out. They have taken their shots down the field, and they have hit on many more than they've missed. Clark, wide open. This ball just thrown too far to the sideline. Had that ball been thrown more towards the end zone, you got a shot. You got to give your receiver a shot to make the play. So Josh Wilbur to punt. Sells over Payne's head and bounces into the end zone. Saturday afternoon, the Civil War, Oregon, Oregon State, with a BCS title opportunity on the line for the Ducks. College football presented by K Jewelers, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC. Pretty good matchup of uh, good running backs with Michael James, Quiz Rogers. But Michael James is, uh, what, about 106 yards away from breaking the Pac-10 rushing record for a sophomore. He could break Steven Jackson's record. I think he'll probably touch the ball enough for that. <laughs> you know he will. No matter who touches the ball in that Oregon offense, they seem to get going. Quick strike out to Robinson. And he was tackled by Tommy Davis. Now this Miami team now has their opportunity, Rod. Yeah, they do, and they need this. They have been stalled the last couple of possessions. They have an opportunity here in the fourth quarter to get back on top. They had a six-point lead, a chance to push it to nine, went for a fake field goal, missed. And now they're down by one. Over eight minutes to go. And that missed extra point. The beginning of the game. Once again, they look for Robinson. He's going to be a two and a half yards short of that line to make. Davis and Kaufman with the tackle. 
Well, the MAC championship has been dominated by Central Michigan the last few years. Now, Dan Lefever. Yep. We had his uh, final MAC game last year. What a performer oh. Dan Lefever was. Great quarterback for Central Michigan. Down there in 2003, Miami of Ohio, Rod. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Roethlisberger. That's right. But uh, they didn't play that game at this field. No, that there. was a campus site before they moved here indoors to Ford Field. Big Ben got a win here anyway, though, didn't he? Yeah, I was here when he took that Super Bowl against Seattle. Third and three now. And a whistle blows. And a timeout being used by Miami. Coach Mike Haywood, what a job he has done. Last time Miami won the MAC championship, we told you 2003 and Big Ben. Miami of Ohio, and you bring out Ben Roethlisberger, the junior quarterback who is a record setter. Big Ben up top. It's Robinson. It's caught. It's touchdown. Goes to the end zone. Touchdown. 2003 MAC champions as Miami wins 49 to 27. Mike Tirico went on the call a few Ben Roethlisberger games after that. They were 13 and one that year. They won a GMAC Bowl, beat Louisville. Their only loss that year was a season opener at Iowa. Now this Miami team that nobody thought would be in position to do this mm -hmm. has a chance to bring some history back to their program. Third and three. Boucher. And he gets a complete to Nick Harwell. Great composure. He wanted to go to Robinson, looked to his left, did not get rattled when he was under pressure, and came back to Harwell. Brother and Kaufman were after him, but that was, you know, heady play by Boucher. Just his third start. Looked one way, didn't have that opportunity, yep. came back, and found Harwell with the pressure coming from playing, the Huskies defense. Playing with poise under pressure. Quarterbacks have to be able to do that. So a first down for the Red Hawks. Merriweather able to get a couple yards that time. Devon Butler with the tackle, Merriweather. You see Tyrone Clark banged up. It was Clark who had the tackle on the failed fake field goal by Miami. Well, he's been a force all night. He's been one of their main blitzing linebackers putting pressure on Boucher. Flag comes down right away. Well, Northern Illinois is really turning up the heat on the running game. Offside. Defense. Number 29. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. You know, they've, they've committed to stopping the running attack, and they've done a much better job in the second half, particularly on Merriweather. He's got a little bit of an ankle issue, I believe. Only six yards in the second half, including a touchdown. But defensively, Northern Illinois committing eight, nine guys to the running game and singling up man-to-man -man coverage on the receivers and daring Boucher to take chances down the field. Empty backfield now for Boucher. Second and three. Harwell. Nowhere to go for Harwell. Alex Kuba was waiting on him. In the end, you know, Northern Illinois is thinking the young quarterback is going to have to throw the football to beat him. That's what you want defensively. You don't want this running attack to carry the ball down the field, get a field goal or a touchdown. You want to make the young quarterback make difficult decisions. You want to throw the ball middle of the field, mid-range. You don't want the short passes. You want him to have to make difficult throws. They blitz him on third and two. 
and he picks it up with one of his favorite targets. That is Armand Robinson. You know what? After spending some time with Boucher yesterday, I don't think he minds that pressure, Rod. Oh, no, not at all. And he's doing a good job of kicking out guys. Look at all the man coverage. Look at everything singled up up here. You see that? And that's exactly what Boucher sees. He knows he's got man coverage. He's looking for his guys to make inside moves and get away. Had three guys coming in crossing routes. He was patient. He found them. Good stuff. Robinson with 143 yards, career-high 13 receptions. Boucher's just going to get rid of this. The pressure came from Sean Progar. Well, they're going to keep turning up the heat. They're going to ask Boucher to make throws into very tight windows. Man covered, people in his face. And I, I like the approach. You, you don't like the idea of a three-deep, four-deep coverage and let him sit and pick. Put the pressure on the quarterback. Make him make plays. Jerry Kill pacing the sideline. Unbeaten in Mac play this year, but getting a serious test from the young Boucher here. Ball is up in the air, and it falls incomplete. Jake Kaufman, once again, the six foot five senior, getting up and deflecting that ball. Kaufman, who served our country in the Marines, served in Iraq. See the pressure. They're bringing seven guys inside trying to. That was DJ Perkel actually in the middle there as Kaufman was right behind him. And full help from Davis, free safety blitz. Perkel's had a couple of moments like that tonight as well. Third and ten now. And another ball that does not get past the defensive line. Number 95, Sean Proger jumping up. Yeah, hit, him, hit him in the chest nearly. They so it's just over four minutes to go, Rod. They're going to have to punt this ball away. Yeah, yeah, aggressive chance. You might not get the ball back, but it's the right thing to do to punt it. Ask your defense to keep that field position for you and create a short field. Zach Murphy gets off a high kick and it bounces and it's going to roll inside the five. A well-placed ball by Zach Murphy. Three minutes and 47 seconds away from handing out that, the MAC championship. Lose the grime. Get touchably clean hair with Axe Shampoo. Get some hair action. in any other room. Don't just watch TV. Direct TV. It's made of premium U.S.-grown cotton. Taped seams lie smoothly along the neckline. Tailored sleeves, proportional, consistent sizing, and of course comfort is built in. Uh, that never happened. A cape? Really? <sighs> okay. Stay frosty. <laughs> Dangerous Hunts 2011, rated T for Teen. At Polaris, we designed a trail-dominating legend, the Sportsman XP, to lead a new team of smooth-riding trail runners. We made a versatile, powerful, mid-size ranger. 
launching a new group of value-minded workhorses. And we made the ultimate hunting vehicle, the Ranger XP, even better. Heading up a new team of hard-working hunting machines. From the number one maker of ATVs and side-by-sides, Polaris. Hardest working, smoothest riding. Life's Good Flashback brought to you by LG. Rob, let's go back to 1983. Toledo went into DeKalb, unbeaten at 9-0. Joel Kincaid's 25-yard touchdown reception in the first. Huskies, 26-10 win. The fans would storm the field there at Northern Illinois. The next week, back in November of 83, the Huskies and Bill Mallory finish you off their only MAC football championship, crushing Ohio at home 41 to 17. 10 win season. They go on to win the California Bowl back then, and now an opportunity to run through the MAC. 8 0 this year. Coach Jerry Kill, a tight one here, a one point lead. 3.47 to go in the game, backed up against Miami. Jordan Lynch, the running quarterback. And Lynch just trying to find some room, an aggressive play from that Miami defense led by Wedge and Mark. Well, the, the shot, I'm thinking, is taking another shot down the field. I mean, you're backed up here. You've had some success throwing it. They're playing you for the run for the run game. You might come up with a play. Your receivers have been great. Take your shot. DJ Brown, who they've been testing, is not in the game at cornerback for Miami. Instead, they go with the freshman Quarles. A timeout here on the field as Miami uses their last timeout of the night. Well, you know, both these teams are vying for this championship are also both going to wind up in bowl games. Oh, we got Illinois and Fresno State coming up yeah. a little later, and this Northern Illinois team could end up playing. Fresno State yeah, bowl game. Yeah. It's a possibility. A lot still has to shake out with all the bowl games. Obviously, everybody's interest on what happens with the BCS this weekend. But, you know, interest what happens with the WAC, with the, mm -hmm. the Boise loss last week. Where does Boise go? Where does Nevada go? Exactly. And where do some of these MAC teams match up in their bowl games? Well, and keep in mind that you, you're not going to have enough teams out of the Pac-10, which is going to open up some spots for some of the MAC teams. And, you know, who knows what shakes out with the Big Ten. But there's an awful lot at stake this weekend. This is, in my view, kind of week two of the playoffs. We had that fantastic Friday playoff last weekend, and now this weekend you've got teams playing for bowl position, playing for a BCS appearance, playing for the national championship game. So this is week two of our playoffs. Harnish on second down from the end zone, and that is off the fingertips of Kyle Scott, his fullback. And you saw the Mac Bowl tie-ins. You got the Little Caesar Bowl here in Detroit, which is Mac versus Big Ten, but the Big Ten is not going to be putting forth a team there, so you don't know what's going to happen there. Then you got the game down in Mobile, where possibly Northern Illinois, maybe Miami of Ohio lands there. And then the Humanitarian Bowl out on the blue turf in Boise, which is WAC versus MAC. But Sunday night, you can find out, as we will have our bowl selection show as to where every team ends up for the postseason. DJ Brown still over there on the bench run. Yeah, passing situation here. He's had a rough night. Third and ten. Airs it out downfield, and that is incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Clark. But Jordan Gafford slapped it away. Yeah, I, I like the thought. I just thought it should have happened on second down. On third and long like that, each and every one of those defensive backs was told, stay deep, no one gets behind you, although Clark almost did. It's an excellent play, both defenders coming over the highest point. Gafford, the veteran captain back there, making the play. Ober's punt from the end zone. Harwell back, fields it at midfield. Coach Mike Haywood, just his second year, the biggest turnaround in college football. When adversity hits, you never, never give up. 
It is your opportunity to get up off that canvas and fight. You have to fight back. As I sit here and hold your hands, as one heartbeat, I feel the energy coming from everybody in this room. We have to go out here and fight. We have to fight as one heartbeat for 60 minutes. It's one play at a time. That's what he said just before they took the field. They have fought for 60 minutes. Now 2.48 to go and trailing by one for the MAC championship. Boucher deflected yet again. A theme all night. Three-step, hands up, defensive linemen knock the ball down. That's number four or perhaps number five they've knocked down. And Northern Illinois, same approach test. It is all about man coverage, bringing pressure inside. Krause knocked that ball down. That was the sixth batted pass tonight. up the middle. Boucher goes down all the way back at the 37 yard line. Devon Butler and Jake Kaufman coming in for the Huskies D. Tess, you want to see aggressive defense? They brought eight. They brought everybody. The only single coverage is out here. Everybody else is going after the quarterback. Three men in coverage, eight men after the quarterback. That is being as aggressive as you possibly can be. Just awesome stuff from defensive coordinator Tracy Claus for Jerry Kill's staff. Send them. Third and 20 now. Harwell. And it was almost intercepted. Demetrius Stone had a chance to secure that ball, but that'll bring up a fourth and 20. How many times have you seen people say or heard them say, I hate the prevent defense? Well, you know what? This Northern Illinois defense has been aggressive. They've gone after Boucher here in the fourth quarter to protect that one point lead. crowd that has ventured five and a half hours here to see their Huskies play. Making some noise as that play clock counts down. We will have a timeout. 151 to go. Boucher's done a lot of good tonight for Miami, but he needs something great here on 4th and 20. The difference, Rod, has been the special teams and what could have been for Miami. Got to be sound. They were not sound early. Missed a PAT. That was blocked right before halftime. They had a field goal blocked when they had a chance to go up by 9, leading by 6. They went with a fake field goal mid-third quarter. Did not convert. That hurt them. Block PAT has been the difference all night long as we've had the five lead changes, but the block field goal and then what could have been three points, Rod, when you were up by six, that would have made a completely different second half. Well, we talked about it then. It was critical. You're the underdog. You have a chance to go up by nine in the third quarter, and instead you don't. You fake the field goal. You leave it a one-possession game, and it played out just as we thought it would in that scenario. Now you're down by a point. Boucher. Can he come up with this? Well, you need to have your defensive backs back. We saw a miracle throw last year by Boise State last week. Here he is. Being chased from behind. Got to let it go. Safety going after it as well. Melvin 
and Gibbons comes up with it. 31 yards on fourth and 20, and they're still alive. Oh, Boucher just crunched there as they came in converging on the young quarterback, Baxter and Kaufman. Clock now under a minute. Yeah. Go back to that last play. And again, that's what we're talking about. You had defensive players going for the pick instead of knocking the ball down. And that created the opportunity for Gibbons. Second and 12. Clock counts down. No timeouts for Miami. Boucher over the middle. Robinson. Here he goes. Touchdown. they should only up by five right now so looking to make it a seven point margin Boucher ball comes loose offensive lineman picks it up can he spin free? Ball comes loose again. Rolling in the end zone, and Gibbons falls on it. Flag is down. They are going to need to clean this up. A wild game just got wilder. Boy, we had a finish with Boise, Nevada last week. These last three plays, oh. crazy action on the field. Well, first of all, was it a pass or a fumble? Arm coming forward or not? And then two, it looks like you have an ineligible receiver catching the ball. Well, that's the issue. Is it a pass or a fumble? Yeah. The ball then fumbles exactly. forward into the end zone. And if it's illegal a touching, there it is. On the offense, number seventy. He fumbled the ball prior to crossing the goal line. It was recovered by another offensive receiver. Therefore, it was dead at that spot. That penalty will be refused. So they actually took the it through the fumble no good. with Nate Williams, saying he would be the one that has to recover the yeah, ball. But yeah. what a wild play. Bottom line is the conversion is no good, exactly. and Miami has a five-point lead. Yeah, so illegal touching. Had it been recovered by Northern Illinois or picked up in London, they would have an opportunity there. But again, Plays dead because it's recovered by a Miami of Ohio player, Gibbons, and that's illegal. Nonetheless, on fourth and 20, a 31-yard reception off a deflection. Then a 33-yard touchdown to Armand Robinson. And with 33 seconds left, Coach Mike Haywood could be looking at a MAC championship here. The most impressive turnaround in college football this year could be capped with a conference championship.
Still wrestling to the 30-yard line. Tess, let's go back to the touchdown, and you'll see the mistake here. An all-out blitz. When you do this and you free up that guy right there, now you've left this receiver completely all alone, and nobody else can come over and cover. He is all alone. Boucher sees it right away. Nobody covering Robinson at all because they went with the all-out blitz. Easy touchdown, Boucher, the youngster, in only his third start, coming up with a great throw under pressure. It's a little elation for the Miami team, but they got a D up here. Here's Harnish now. He slings it and gets it complete to Willie Clark. Chandler Harnish, very capable of taking shots downfield as it was proven early in this game. Well, what you want to do is get close enough to have a shot at the end zone. You got a couple timeouts. You want to get another 10 or 15 yards with this shot to give yourself two more plays. Harnish, three-man rush, slings it to a wide-open Ashford. And Rod, they're going to have their chance. They're doing it absolutely perfectly. They can pick up more yardage so that with their final throw, they ought to have a 30, 25-yard toss into the end zone. 16 seconds to go. Now, we've already seen one defense try to make the super play and get a pick instead of knocking the ball down. A reminder that Illinois and Fresno State will be coming up. 10-21, estimated kickoff there. Coach Mike Haywood, a one-win team a year ago. Eight wins this year and a chance to win the MAC championship. What a wild fourth quarter it's been. Yeah, fourth and 20, knock the ball down. No, they go for the pick. It comes up for Gibbons, and then an all-out blitz leaves Robinson completely all alone. And there's your go-ahead touchdown for Miami of Ohio. And that is coming from a quarterback at Austin Boucher, who three weeks ago was a backup who didn't see the field. Starter goes down, Zach Dicer. Boucher steps up and has been unbeaten since. Can they hold on here? Now, they don't have to throw for the end zone now. They've got 16 seconds and another timeout. Harnish. They only bring three. And he gets this complete for a first down to the 32 to Palmer. And remember that one timeout. So it affords them the ability as the clock stops on the first down regardless. And they do utilize that last timeout. So 10 seconds to go, Rod. Well, this is as, as great as you could have hoped for, really. No incomplete passes, no waste, wasted time. You are only 32 yards away. You have a shot at the end zone. It doesn't have to be a Hail Mary. Back in 2005, it was an amazing finish. Northern Illinois, Akron, Garrett Wolf had 270 yards and a couple touchdowns, but Akron came back. Luke Getzky ran for a touchdown. He threw for 413 yards, and there were 10 seconds left when Akron pulled this off to win 31 to 30. Now, 10 seconds remain here, and it's Northern Illinois in position to avenge that. Are you kidding me? You can't make this stuff up. You can't. You just can't make that up. They lost with 10 seconds to go on a 36-yard touchdown pass in this game five years ago and now they are 32 yards out with 10 seconds to go and look who's back in the cornerback dj brown for miami they've gotten to him twice tonight here it is harnish airs it out overthrown five seconds remain well they took the shot at getting closer now they don't have that luxury. Now they can send four, five vertical, spread out the end zone, and try to create a one-on-one -on -one somewhere down there. And then it becomes a jump ball. If you spread the field, you got a shot to create one-on-one -on -one somewhere. 
Jimmy V. Week for Cancer Research as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. It's senior night at Bulldog Stadium in Fresno, California. Tonight, Illinois becomes just the ninth school from an automatic qualifying BCS conference to visit Fresno State's Bulldog Stadium. And we can only hope for what these teams delivered a year ago. In regulation, amazingly, a 53-52 win for Fresno State over Illinois. The game-winning play, Devin Cunningham, an offensive lineman, grabbing the two-point conversion, a 105 combined points. 
Welcome to Fresno, California. I'm Carter Blackburn with the Oregon's winning his head football coach, Mike Velotti, and former All Pac 10 quarterback at Washington, Brock Heward. Well, we saw a wild finish in the MAC championship game. We saw an even wilder finish last year when Fresno State went to Illinois and won on that tip ball that Cunningham hauled in. So here it is a year later, Illinois from the Big Ten visiting Fresno, California. Both these teams are going to bowl games. So what is on the line tonight? Well, the big fella Cunningham wants another reception, I'll tell you. He probably won't get it. Actually, for Fresno State, chance to get their eighth win, chance to beat a BCS team, a Big Ten team, which Pat Hill makes a living on that type of thing. He talks about it. He recruits on it. They also have a chance to win a ninth game with their bowl game. So they're very excited about this opportunity. Tonight. The Bulldogs are going to be fired up. This is what they live for. But for Illinois and for Ron Zook, a win tonight will guarantee you a winning season. Remember, six years in Champaign, it was just the Rose Bowl year, and in 07 was his only win winning season so he wants that on his record they need that in Champaign to build their program Ron Zook in Illinois getting ready to take the field here at Bulldog Stadium and one of the hallmarks of the Ron Zook Illinois teams have been running the football they did that when they went all the way to the Rose Bowl in 2007 this year it's Mikel LaShore last time that the Illini took the field an incredible performance by the show. Special back, 230 pounds, and not many running backs in the history of college football can say they gained 330 yards in one game, and he did at Wrigley Field two weeks ago against Northwestern, and Mike, his game just continues to get better week in and week out. Well, he runs with great power, great vision, and he's so strong through the contact zone. He's not the fastest guy. 330 yards only translated two TDs, but again, he has power. He's going to break a lot of tackles. LaShore, 333 yards versus Northwestern last year against Fresno State 184 yards in a pair of touchdowns so Illinois from the Big Ten becomes just the second Big Ten school to ever travel to Bulldog Stadium to play this Fresno State team as Mike said this is what Fresno State gets fired up for a BCS conference team on their field for just the ninth time They're about ready to put the hammer down right here. The Bulldogs ready to bite. The Illini ready to fight. It's Friday night football in Fresno on the eve of championship Saturday. Can the Heisman hopefuls deliver their teams to the national championship games?